Do you think because the average Ukrainian would rather anything. be invaded by Russia or indebted to the West for helping them against the invasion of Russia? Ukrainians are Honestly, asking for I don't, help. I don't know. And I, and we can poll. You, we have po there's public polling data for this information. There is public polling data for this information. Now, we're watching a debate between one of my good buddies, okay, one of my uh, friends who I actually want to visit when I go back to Europe before crossing the border into Ukraine. Uh, this is Lonerbox, and he is going to be debating uh, a caller into a show about Ukraine. And apparently, people told me this debate is extremely frustrating. So if you don't want a, uh, a, a very frustrating experience, I recommend, you know, maybe muting or, or, you know, I don't know, going out, getting a girlfriend, uh, uh, getting a, a hot cup of joe, something else. Because this is going to be a frustrating experience, okay? It's going to be painful from what I've heard, okay? It's not as bad as Coach Red Pill, but still, heard it's going to be pretty bad. Let's watch it. That's you why you all you're doing, your that's brain. why <laughs> all you're doing is looking at photographs of black sons going, That's okay. why that's all you've got. You have nothing. So, I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to ask There's... you, so November 25th, 1940, when Stalin asked to join the Axis powers, was that just a meme or what? Oh, we were just talking about this earlier on stream. Oh my goodness. True. That's a great, great question to ask. Oh my God! Nationalism doesn't ine doesn't inevitably make you a Nazi, right? Like, yeah, it does. and that's why I yeah, would ask you. I, well, yeah, yeah, wait, kind nationalism of. Does. Nationalism inevitably makes like, nationalism. Does nationalism inevitably make you a Nazi? You yeah, just said yes, it, it does. It, 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 they both have the same basis of belief. Oh, dude, nationalism can extend into Nazism, but dude, nationalism, the thing is, are you really going to tell me that Algerian nationalists who are trying to throw off French colonials, like they were, they were Nazis, we're really going to like make that extension, like they're all the same? Like, I hate Robert Mugabe. I think uh, he's done some very bad stuff. He's not a Nazi. And he fought to free his country. Like, just, ugh, whatever, we'll continue. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Hello. Hello, you could hear me? Why do I recognize your voice? Oh, because I debated you and kicked your ass before. Okay. How are you doing? Okay, so you said a few... I think I've talked to this person a few times as well. They usually only call into streams when they're intoxicated, which is probably part of the reason why these conversations are so frustrating is because they seem to drink a lot. Not to call him an alcoholic, just saying, like, this is what they've told me, that when they called into my show, they, like, very openly were like, I am intoxicated. And I'm like, okay, do you think that's the best time to call into the show? And then we have an hour-long conversation. Conversation is being generous. Funny things about um, the Azov guys. You mm. wanna... First of all, I want to know how, what was the process of Azov being me mellowed out by joining the National Guard of Ukraine? Uh, because Bilecki, the big Nazi dude who founded them, fucked off. Okay, that's they just were, one guy. They had... And what year, what Excuse year would me, you say? I... It's not... Already, already poisonous. Ask a question, Lonerbark starts to answer, uh, and then immediately, just... Okay, from this point on, it's gonna be garbage. Hey, wait, 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 you are very excited. <laughs> do you wanna... Oh, you I just wanna know what wanna year you think this contest? happened, then. What? Okay, go ahead. What year do you think that happened? When did Belitsky leave out as of? I don't know. You tell me. You're the one that's pinning this whole thing on one guy. So I'm I don't not, know. I, when... Excuse me. You asked me. Wait. Are you okay? I... No. <laughs> this is a problem when I talk to them as well. Is you'll start to answer a question. They'll interrupt you when you've said two or three words to start responding to things you didn't say, but they're imply that they're trying to take implications out of what you're saying before you even finish your answer. It's like. It's 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 a really aggressive strategy because I think that the strategy is never let you like ground your position or like get put your foot down. And so if you can't get your footing in the conversation, they can just be like, oh, wow, you're really on a port before like you even like finish talking, which I've seen them do this a few times. And by the way, to answer Lona Box question, they are not OK. How's your well, yeah. how's your blood pressure? Can you take some deep breaths? OK, so you're just going to do this instead of answering the question i'm just you going i'm just trying he, try, to, he tried to answer you asked me a question about why do i think azov is not as nazi as they used to be right 
Well, no, you said that I'm Nazis. beginning no, no. my answer and then I name one guy as the first part of my answer and you say, oh, okay, that's finish. just one okay, guy, bro. No, I just wanted to know what year he left mostly, but go ahead. Finish what year your... he left the Azov Battalion? I have no idea. You tell me. I don't know exactly. I thought it was some, is it somewhere between 2014 and you left 16, in the 17. Left I can't you remember exactly, but he's not there anymore, okay. right? That doesn't sound right for reform. First of all, you saying so 2017 is the last time and, uh, Azov were Nazis? Is that what you're saying? I don't get it. So this one guy at, it determined looks like the whole at, ideology it of It looks like Azov? at most, Azov, where about 20% of them at most seem to have been Nazis. Like, like a few, like a couple of hundred. Okay, of them. okay. First of all, that sounds ridiculous. If you join a Nazi organization with a Walt Sango and a Black Sun, you're a Nazi. There's no 20%. No, nah, you join an nah, organization. Nah, nah, no, 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 no. Let me finish this. Okay, if go you on. join an organization, even if you don't exactly agree 100% with it, you join. By the way, I think, I think Lonerbox is right about the years, by the way. When you join it, you are still supporting its ideology and okay, its so goals. Hypothetically, you are in Mariupol. There is a civil war being fomented by, uh, with Lil, Putin's little green men. Uh, you want well, to fight against them. Well, it wasn't only, okay, you first of all, that's want to fight against well, yeah, the, He won't even let won't even let Putin talk. This is this is what it's like to talk to this person. And I've seen conversations with them again and again and again because they keep calling into the shows, mo most likely intoxicated. I don't know if they're intoxicated this time as well. And they'll, before they before they even start answering, your, before you can even start answering your question, they're already just trying to like tear you down before you can give any sort of an answer. Because they, they're, they're with you not to listen to you, not to talk to you. They're trying to get on stream to preach at you about why you're wrong. And you're awful for being wrong. And that's that's the reason they're calling the stream. They have no interest in what you have to say, but they believe you or your audience should have an interest in what they have to say. Me, you want to fight against them, okay? Uh, let's just say you're, you're like a liberal, okay? And the only group that's um, uh, in your area that you can <laughs> fight against them uh, with is Azov. Do you just say, nah, fuck that. I'm just going to let, like, I'm just going to fuck off. Like, what? Yeah, what the fuck? Why would I join a bunch of Nazis? Because not all fuck? of them are because not all of them are Nazis. Because when oh people my God. are being okay, okay. Let me just wait, put this when people are being when people are being attacked, when they are being invaded, when their homes are being attacked, and when their cities are being bombed, then yeah, you don't really get to sit there and fucking purity test the army or the yeah, battalion you, yeah, that you, you join. Do. Yeah, yeah, you do. So, okay, so you let me let many me wars? put it. No, but huh. well, first of all, why did I guess? First of all, I. Dude, Lonerbox is usually never this sassy. He's usually never this sassy. He's such a sassy cat here. He's such a sassy cat. I love it. I love it. And he's like, I, I, I can't even say anything because he's, he's just saying what I would say in the same position. No shit, I didn't fight in wars. Neither did you. But That's why I'm not the one purity testing the people who are fighting for their fucking freedom. I do think that, of course, you can have standards to what organizations you join. But when we talk about Azov, if it's not an organization 100% dominated by Nazis, and even when they originally had, like, the actual, like, Nazi-ish, like, leader, like, the person who was actual far-right, like, maniac as, as their commander, even when they were at their worst, we to say that they're, like, 60% neo-Nazis or 50% neo that would not be that would not be honest. Even from the internal numbers they have stated, we're talking, like, 20%. We're talking, like, in that percent. We're talking about where Loner had put it. And so if you're in Kharkiv or you're in Mariupol, where it originally was based out of because Azov came from football hooligans, if you're over there and, you're, and your city and your town has been attacked and we see, I mean, at, like, Mariupol was leveled. Like the majority of the buildings in Mariupol now are like non-functioning. They they leveled the city. They they kill. They commit war crimes. A lot of people are not going to know Azov as like oh I'm going to join that Nazi battalion full of Nazi. They're going to be like I'm going to go and join that battalion which is currently guarding my village. And through that happening, that's how Azov has gotten more and more and more. I mean I want to say I don't want to say like completely apolitical because they're not, but they've gotten more milk toast. And 
everybody who really studies Ukrainian the Ukrainian military seems to agree on that fact. They just disagree to what level they have. Unless you're literally, if you're Russian propaganda TV, they're not going to get into this nuance whatsoever because it doesn't matter to them because it's not their villages being bombed. It's not their towns being bombed. They're bombing the towns and villages of another country who whose people they don't even like acknowledge as Ukrainians. So like, it's not that surprising that they, they're not going to get into that nuance. And so I do think that nuance is important when we're talking about how people join the military. Because when I talk to people about Azov, when I asked them, they weren't like, oh, that's that um, right-wing militia. They say, that's that elite fighting group. Because they remember the battle for Mariupol. And that's how they're thought of now. And you'll see they're like, I have seen like Ukrainian... Like, like young Ukrainian Zoomer, like, I don't want to call them progressive, but like liberal-ish, like teenagers wearing Azov gear. And like, these aren't like Nazis, they weren't like Nazis. And when I say Azov gear, I mean like the symbol and stuff. They're just like, yeah, I'm pro-Ukraine. That's just what Azov symbology, the Azov has become in the eyes of many Ukrainians because of the Battle of Mariupol. And it has, that's not to say that it's completely apolitical or it doesn't have a far right contingent. That's being dishonest. But to just say it's a Nazi battalion, if my village was being invaded, I'd just die. Like, get out of here. Dude, this isn't a purity test. This it is, is a purity test. What about You're, joining um, the Azov battalion to fight against a Russian invasion automatically turns you into a Nazi? I don't know. Do you think, do you think a group that has these kind of summer camps are mm. only 20% Nazis. This is from The Guardian. I posted it in your Twitch chat. I've seen the summer camps, yeah. Do you see how the okay. only thing that you can grasp to is like aesthetics? Because aesthetics, this is you not... mean a summer camp to indoctrinate children into a Nazi ideology because is aesthetics to you? you this think, is... like, I don't know why you are like following uh, no, this no, no, line. No, 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 tell me why you think this is aesthetics. Why do you think going to a summer camp that teaches you how to be a Nazi? Because if this was a parallel, because I know you like to do the Banderai shit. If this was a parallel to somewhere like the, World War II. was the II, general of the Ukrainian army this is was, Banderai. If this was a parallel to what you're talking about with World War II. By the way, if you guys want to know, if I had a choice on what military group I would join, I wouldn't join Azov. It wouldn't be the group I would join. Absolutely not. But we're talking about, when we're talking about a lot of these local villages, definitely around Mariupol, around Kharkiv, like they're the local options and they're well known in Ukraine and they're pretty respected within Ukraine. And so it's not that crazy that people are, are joining them um, and they're not even Nazi, they're Nazis. They're not like, some of them, a lot of them don't even have like right-wing beliefs. They're just like, Ah, oh, they're a Nazi group. I gotta join what I'm gonna join, right? Oh, they're 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 I'm I'm not a Nazi, but I'm joining because they're the elite group, and I need to join the military group, so I'm joining them. That's really all the newer members of Azov. That's basically why they're joining. That's not to say four right people don't join it. They absolutely do. But when we're talking about it's a Nazi battalion, and if you're in it, you're a Nazi. That's not a correct um that's that's not a correct analysis of what the, the what the group is. It's just not. You, you would have a point because that would mean arming the Ukrainians means arming Azov and then like these groups would be doing like uh, basically engaging in fucking pogroms but if the Nazi contingent I mean, in Ukraine if the Nazi the contingent in Ukraine is as strong as you insist that it is then wh where is this happening there are still a third of a million Jews living in Ukraine where are oh, the anti-Semitic pogroms where are the like burning of fucking synagogues happening all over the place where are oh, the, by the, way, what where's, like, the ethnic the cleansing other, of like, non-Ukrainians non by Ukraine Ukrainian military forces. That's you why know, all you're doing. Your that's brain. why <laughs> all you're doing is looking at photographs of black sons going. That's okay. why that's all you've got. You have nothing. So, so do you think it's it was it's good to join the Taliban to fight against America? The Taliban Should is I the join entire. The Talib do you wait? The the Taliban is not like a contingent of the Afghan like resistance that was the taliban was the main thing if the azov okay, battalion okay, I'll was give you a the better entire I'll give you ukrainian a, army you, a you would have a point okay. yeah that actually is true i agree with i agree with loner on that okay first of all the general of the ukrainian army is an open banderite i sent you an article where he was he went on twitter on on the anniversary of bandera's birthday and and celebrated it there i mean like okay can i be for real donald trump has celebrated American historical figures that have done horrendous things when it comes to slavery. When it talk about Andrew Jackson, do you know how Andrew Jackson treated Native Americans? He genocided them. Like he engaged in an act, like he, the Trail of Tears 
like was was at the very least you call it ethnic cleansing if we're being generous columbus day in the united states you know how every single time columbus day comes on and we have like President Trump and all these other Republicans, including Tucker Carlson and all the Fox News media, they'll come up and celebrate Columbus. Do I do I need to go into the details of the type of horrific things that Columbus engaged in? N nations will derive a national mythos from his historical figures. If you ask Tucker Carlson what he liked about Columbus, he's going to talk about discovering America and, oh, the, the starting of the American project and democracy. And that's the type of stuff they're going to talk about. They're not going to say, I liked it when he went to the natives and said, they'll just make some good fucking slaves. If it was up to them, they would completely erase that history and pretend it never happened because that's not nice. That's not a nice history to remember. Oh, that's, oh, they make sound like a bad guy. And you want to know what? That exists in every single country in the world. In Russia, you hear the same thing when talking about Russian kings and talking about Soviet leaders like Stalin, how people will rewrite history to pretend Stalin wasn't a bad, a fucking terrible, terrible bad man who engaged in atrocities, right? They, they Every single nation engage in this, engages in this type of national mythos, you know? And for Ukrainians, that's what they do with Stefan Bandera. That isn't to say that everybody in Ukraine loves him. He's a controversial figure. And to say is, and to try to pretend like all Ukrainians love him, that's not true. But with him being a controversial figure, figure like an Andrew Jackson, right? Like people like that, you're going to have people who are going to protect, like, try to erase all the things he did in, uh, to Polish, all the things that the UPA did to the Poles, all of the t terrible atrocities they engaged in. And they're just going to concentrate on, oh, they fought the Germans and the Soviet. And that's the stuff they're going to concentrate on. And I've been to some of these, like, UPA, like, the I went to a UPA themed restaurant in Lviv to try to be like, okay, what's the, th what's, how, how deep in the culture is the UPA? And when you talk to them about, the UPA, they don't talk about like, oh yeah, we want to go and kill all the Poles. They talk about like, oh, we fought those dastardly Nazis and those dastardly communists. That's how they retell the history now, right? That They don't talk about any of the collaboration or anything like that because that's that's not nice. It's like when Americans talk about the space program. They don't want to br bring up any particular scientists who had a German accent that they brought over because that's not nice, you know? It, I, I, that's how I view Stefan Bandera. I don't like Stefan Bandera. I, th I think he engaged in, uh, in his organization engaged in horrific actions. Uh, but he has entered this Ukrainian kind of mythos, like that all nations have. And so it's not that surprising that a Ukrainian politician posed with him. Do I think he should have? No, obviously not. But I would use it to similarly to like if, if, if Millie was to take a picture with Andrew Jackson and post it on Twitter. Does that mean he's like a Jackson? Like he believes in all of the, that he wants to bring back slavery or he wants to find all the natives and like put them on the wall and like force them out of the reservations and finish the manifest test. Like, no, no. It means he probably has a romanticized version of Andrew Jackson in his head that he wants because people like to have a national mythos, just like with Stefan Bandera. Again, not good, but trying to use this to undermine support for a country that's being invaded. I don't see it. There are pictures of him. If you Google pictures, the general, the Ukrainian army of him. So this is what she's talking about right now. Was that, by the way, was that spitting or was that not spitting? I want to know because I've, I've talked about this take on a few occasions and I get varying levels of, of disagreement from chat when I give that take. Was that spitting or not spitting? And, and the thing is, this is something I've talked to Polish people about and uh, as well. And I uh semi spitting agree 100 percent. okay i i think it's spitting i think it's spitting there are pictures standing next to upa flag standing next to other banderites so you can't say that oh it's only just a small contingency in the ukrainian army that are nazis no the general of the ukrainian army is an open banderite do you think See, listen to how it listen to the to the jump there it's not just a small contingent in azov that are nazis it's the general of the ukrainian army that's a banderite so number one they've moved over from nazi to banderite and if you can say there's no distinction there is a distinction definitely when you're talking about ukrainian nationalism and the actual neo-nazi groups and the people who try to like prophesy like prophetize about the glory of the upa there is a difference there's a lot of times overlap but there is a difference and so we've already moved from Nazi. So she's trying to say the, the general of the Ukrainian army is a Nazi, but she doesn't. She She's like, well, you say that it's a small contingent, but the leader of, of the army is a Banderite. 
So now she's taking from that image that he took a bunch of political beliefs, as in, i.e., he wants to kill all the Jews, that he believes that Jews are subhuman, and all these other things from that taking of that picture. Again, I don't like that he took that picture, but you cannot take that he believes all those things from that picture and that picture alone. You cannot. Just like I could not take from some Republican posing with a picture of Andrew Jackson that they want to go find every reservation and hang Indians in the trees. That's the way they would put it. That's, that's, you can take that conclusion from it. You could be like, this person, I think, has a romanticized view of this individual, that this person has an ahistorical view. You could, you can be like, it could be one hint of a belief if you were to find like a pattern of like, if you showed me like the general saying like, I think what he did to the polls was perfectly fine. Then I'd be like, oh, damn, okay, we got something here, but this isn't enough. I think so, every, wait, wait. I, I know this is like really difficult for you, but do you think, no, like, no. I know you, I understand you that you think. Do you think if David, I'd let you if finish a your Nazi sentence. was the I, general of the American I, army, I what you, would you think? I let you finish your sentence. But this is, Burns this is, is ridiculous. Moral, you wouldn't say this for like ISIS man. or Al Qaeda. What the f did, where's the, I, okay. When I see the general, when I see that Ukrainian general, like engaging in, in like organizing 9-11 terror attacks, against like we're gonna take a plane we're gonna ram it into like a like a like a russian apartment complex or something then then maybe we can make the comparison to al-qaeda like no you cannot make this comparison dream canoe thank you for subbing with the prime for 11 months i appreciate it if the uh, the anti by the way by the way if i was to talk about let's say america got invaded right now and and somebody was like well we need to invade america to get rid of the confederate sympathy like they, they it's like a confederate nation it's like confederate ideology it's everywhere we need to and i'd be like well there are a lot of confederate sympathizers but like the confederacy was smashed and, da -da, and getting all the detail but then someone was like oh really oh really well what about what about this huh and then it shows me this and i'm and i mean this is bad but nobody can tell me that this means that Mitch McConnell wants to pass a law bringing back slavery. Because everybody in this room, everybody who's American understands the exact argument that would be made about this about this flag. If we were to talk to Mitch McConnell, it would be, well, heritage, it's about heritage. It's a, well, it's not really about, no, no, slavery was bad. But I believe, you know, states, are, that we know the exact type of romanticized version of history that will be espoused to us if we were to have this conversation with Mitch McConnell when he took that photo. A hundred percent. Every single person in this conversation, everybody in chat knows, everybody who's gonna be watching this on YouTube after knows, everybody knows exactly the type of conversation that would happen. This could not be seen as a justification to stop supporting America if we were invaded by China and they tried to take over California or Mexico was like, we need to reclaim our lost territory and they invaded Texas. And again, we should not be making, and again, I just, one last time, you cannot make the ISIS and Al-Qaeda comparison as all of us not planting bombs in civilian homes and taking slaves. Anti-Assad government, uh, anti-Assad rebels, some of them were Al-Qaeda affiliated. Do you think that was good to join those? Let's give you, let's give you okay, let's give you an analogy. Okay, here we go. Um, I just gave you, you an uh, analogy. Me, are you, are you pro-Palestine? Yes. Okay. Let's say, do you know who Marwan Barhouti is? No, I'm not really familiar. That's okay. With we can't all be experts. Palestine. But let's say, so let's say Barhouti is yeah, basically yeah. like a, a secular uh, guy from FETA who led uh, the first and second intifada. He's in jail right now uh, because he killed some people. Uh, he has since become very... Uh... By the way, here would be the better comparison for if you were to go against Assad, by the way. It wouldn't be, would you join Al-Qaeda? Because Al-Qaeda is a terror group that engages in terrorism. So it's all dominated by hardcore jihadists, right? Where if you're talking about modern Azov, you can't really make that comparison. They're not doing terror attacks. They're not, like, as far as we know, as long as the evidence has been presented, they're not engaging in like, like, like taking car bombs and driving next to a bunch of civilian homes and going kaboom and just like, like driving planes and the like, like like apartment complexes and in, in, in Russia. That's like that isn't happening. If it happens in the future, I guess like, well, there it is. But it's not happening now, and I have no reason to believe it'll happen in the future. So I don't really think this is a comparison. A better comparison would be would you join an FSA militia that was made up five percent of of Islamic extremists, like hardcore like jihadi types to fight Assad? And my answer to that would be absolutely. Yes. Yes.
Yes, Assad has killed many, 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 many more Syrians than any terror group in the world could ever dream to do and will kill when all of this war is done, have killed many more Syrians than ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and all these groups combined. And we're not even talking a group that, uh, like a militia that is Al-Qaeda. It's made up like 5% to 10%, like Islamic extremists, 90% not. That would be the, the comparison here. Maybe like 30% very Islamically conservative men, right? Which in Syria, that's a lot of people. Like, I, I, like I think anybody who wouldn't, either you know doesn't have the experience of what it's like to be syrian and obviously i don't or doesn't know that you know how brutal assad actually was and you want to know what many syrians actually made that calculation themselves and then joined the revo uh, the revolution against assad for the reasons i've already espoused considering the torture the the authoritarianism the corruption like everything that was wrong with the assad regime and what they did to the people of their country like a lot more uh, popular. He's actually more popular than the Hamas and uh, Abbas. He's, he's, a, he's more popular than both of those leaders, but he's in okay. jail, so he can't run for office. Um, he's quite secular, quite nationalist, um, is against killing civilians. Let's say uh, the Palestinians rally around this fairly secular, uh, fairly progressive like uh, leader. Uh, Literally about to do the exact same comparison I did, but he just moved it down a few countries. So it looks like me and like Lona Box are literally on the exact same wavelength here. Uh, who is against killing civilians. Let's say they rally around him and there might be actually a good case to arm Palestine against the Israeli occupation. Would you be opposed to it if it turned out that 10% or 20% of that resistance was still part of, was still involved with Hamas? How would they, how are they, in, first of all, none of this, none of what you said makes sense. So the secular guy, so everybody she rallies wanted, she, behind she's, she's not going to, she's not going to answer the question because the question like directly calls out the problem that sometimes during wars of revolution, during like revolutions against oppressive dictators or uh, resistance struggles against imperialist invaders, say if this happened in Algeria, this happened in, in, in Uganda, this happened in like a lot of African countries, this happened in, I mean, it's happening now in Ukraine, that everybody, and this happened in China as well with Mao and Chen Kai-shek, where everybody of all political suasions kind of turned their guns towards the invader, the imperialist, the colonizer, opens fire, and in a combined effort to resist the invader. And that means all of Ukrainian society, just like all of Algerian society against the French colonialists, just like all of Chinese society, there was, there was Chinese troops trained by German soldiers, Nazi soldiers that were fighting in China. Then there was Mao's soldiers as well, another brutish dictator who, who had his own soldiers fighting. But if, you, if I was a Chinese person thinking about joining any movement, I mean, like I would, I would join the, the resistance against the Japanese invaders because the Japanese invaders was a much bigger threat for everyday Chinese people. And like, we're not even talking about things that are comparable. You can't compare Chen Kai-shek to Zelensky. You can't compare Mao Zedong to Zelensky. But everybody, I think, in historical retrospect, understands why people picked up guns to fight against the Japanese. Same with the Algerians against the French. Does that mean that they, that we should abandon any support for these, these historical struggles? No, it'd be silly in any other historical context. But in the present, it, it feels weird because we don't have that retrospect secular guy like and Zelensky, he's assuming... like the Zelensky parallel right because Zelensky as far no, as we know is not a Nazi no no it's not first of all Zelensky is just a corrupt asshole he doesn't he ran as a peace candidate like I don't whatever none your, your analogy I'm trying to understand yeah isn't it weird that Zelensky ran as a peace candidate and even the person who ran on a pro peace platform on a pro peace platform couldn't get a deal with Putin what does that say you say, you, you say that as if that's a bad indication of Zelensky. Why can't that be a bad indication of Russia and of Putin and of, of their inability to pursue peace and compromise with the Ukrainians? Send your analogy right now. So does, does this guy represent like an organization or something? Or is this just one single guy? He, he's uh, what are from, you he's like, a, I don't understand from, what you're saying. He's from Feta. Because we're talking, okay, we're he's talking about an... Okay, but I don't, I don't understand. I don't know all the groups in Palestine. And PA so actually be... have a very strong historical connection to anti-Semitic attacks in the region. So you could, you can make the same analogy there as well. Okay, 
first of all, the anti-Semitism in Palestine is different than European anti-Semitism because you know, you know that Arabs, is uh, Muslims were cool with Jews and Christians up until, like, until the British and the French came in. She is going to do, I don't know if it's a she or a he, I don't know, so I'm just going to say they. They have no clue, no clue how to answer this question, and now they're going to do everything in their power to avoid it. That's all they're doing. Also, I don't know if I would say that they were, the area was full with Jews. I don't know if that's the exact words I would use. Wait, are you, wait, stop are for you a going fucking tell second. Me? Did you, did you, you really just say that Arabs were fine with Jews yes. before the British mandate? fine with jews i thought i said full with jews i was confused right generally yes Arab, uh, muslims were cool with jews and christians the hebron we, massacre they have a, the hebron massacre where they were in the 1920s where one. there were fucking okay, I'm riots not saying, I'm not, this was I'm commonplace not the ottoman empire where jews were second class citizens what the fuck is wrong you don't know anything bro yeah, you're I a do. fucking mouse in a maze of... You're just, you that's why all about? you got is looking at fucking pictures that? of what? black sons with a fucking little magnifying glass because oh, you have shit. no He's policy going position. You He's have going no in. Islamic history. Bro, you don't know early Islamic history then. You want, Are you, do you comparing? Think Jews are... So, for those of you who don't know, uh, Loner Box is Lebanese. And from my private conversations with him, he knows, I think, a, a decent more about the Middle East than a lot of other content creators in the space. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if the person knows his background, but I, I would not, I, I, I would not, um, I would not just completely disregard his, uh, his opinion here. Also, I don't think Lonerbox said that there was like, all the Arabs were always like always hateful and all of them always hated the Jews. But to say that like anti-Semitism arrived in the Middle East only after Israel arrived is, is, is a retelling of history. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's very much a rosy pictured, uh, view of the ancient Islamic world, which is just not, it's just not factually accurate. We're not second class citizens in the Ottoman Empire? It's completely different than what, what Jews were in Europe. You're talking about attacks on... It is true though, that the Islamic world at times was, was substantially less anti-Semitic than Europe. That doesn't mean that they weren't anti-Semitic, still were, just that at certain points in European history, Europeans were just more anti-Semitic than the Ottoman Empire, for example. On non-Muslims, which is part of the Quran, versus the anti-Semitism that was experienced by Jews in Europe. J Jews had like a golden age, I believe, in, um, in Umayyad, uh, Spain, uh, during it's like the Middle the Ages. Middle East, but okay. But that was under Muslim control. They were also the treated fairly East well Star. in Iran. That doesn't take away from how they were treated in Palestine and, and the Fertile Crescent. I'm telling you the history of anti-Semitism in Arabia. Do you think the Jews who get chased out different. of their villages and towns care about the... Why were we talking about the, the caliphate in, in Spain? Why were we talking about that? Why would that matter? That's not even in the Middle East. I mean, I guess because there's Muslims, that because it was Muslim, I guess. I guess that's the point. It feels like it's kind of like a... A deviation the nature of the anti but it is true that in the caliphate in spain the jews under muslim control were treated much better than when the christians regained control which then the christians engaged in many pogroms against them the semitism that did it to them no I, I actually i learned that in my class about riots i took a class <laughs> isn't that crazy i went to maryland u and i took a class about rioting and and one of the early riots i was taught about was the pogroms in spain after uh uh, land was captured back from the Umayyads. Because you're making these comparisons that don't make sense. And I'm trying to understand your comparisons and it's just not making any sense. No, you're not trying sense. to understand shit. You're coming in here I to am. fucking I'm... jizz <laughs> over black sun. Okay, let's bring you back I'm to the black sun. Here, okay, com look, I'm there, com look. I'm coming here trying to understand how somebody could be okay with Nazism in the 21st century. Why do you somebody think, wait, 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 why do you think See how this, like, she dodged the question. Sorry, she. They dodged the question. And now they're going to pivot to, well, you just love Nazis. You're okay with Nazism in the 21st century. Because they didn't want to answer the nuance that Loner Box was trying to bring to the conversation. Because, of course, it's impossible if people have nuanced views of foreign policy. It's just impossible. I think I'm okay with Nazism in the 21st century. What policy you am I supporting are, that is pro-Nazism in the 21st century? You're, pro, you're defending Azov right now. You're saying that the general of the Ukrainian army 
being an open banderite is completely okay. It doesn't have any wider consequences. Okay, let's say I had to choose. To the let's say I had to choose. Okay, wait, wait. This would be the best question for in response. What's the wider consequence? What's the wider consequence of us continuing to support Ukraine with its current ideological makeup? What's the, what's going to happen? What's going to what what like what is going to happen? Choose whether or not the Ukrainian uh, general was a bandrai or is or isn't. Would I say I'd rather he was or wasn't? It, it, he is. It was a fact. And this the is fact, fact is that, and, and if I say I'd rather he wasn't, I'm not what saying. What do you think the I'm internal the world is perfect for a bandarite to become the general? Okay, wait. Here's the. I just army. need to ask. So, okay, this is obviously over whether or not we arm Ukraine to help them against Russia, right? That's the only extrapolation you can wait, bring what? to this argument. No, you. you well. I since we both we're, oppose Nazis, we're outside we of both wish okay. there would be less Nazis in Ukraine. But the okay. question is, is whether or not the fact that there are some Nazis or some like uh, problematic it's not some or, Nazis. Okay, could, okay, okay. Talk it's, about okay, it's all loads the of Nazis. Statues okay, okay. It's loads of dedicated it's, it's, yeah, to UPA statues. members. Yeah, UPA OUN statues. Members. UPA statues everywhere. Okay, they all love Nazis. They're all Z Kyling. It's whether or not yeah, this is the normalization of the far question, right ideas. The this also is, happens in Poland and the Baltic states, dude. Do you think every single time we have like an American, like a statue of George Washington, people pass that and they're like, slavery, whoa, do you think that's like what, like everybody's just like, like when they see that, that's the first thing that comes to their mind? No, a lot of Americans are going to think, ah, oh, freedom or independence, the war, of it. that's how they're going to think of it. They don't like get past that and they're just like, slavery, that's what I was all about. Like, that's not what they're, that's not what they do. I mean, I assume, I assume a few people, <laughs> I assume there's some people, but I was, uh, the most, the majority of people are going to pass that and that's what they're going to think. And the same thing happens in the, in the Ukraine. When they see a UPA statue, they're going to think our struggle for independence, our fight against the Germans and the, and the Russians and the colonizers. They're not going to think the slaughters of, of Polish villages. That's not what, that's not what's going to pop into their mind. The historical mythos, that's what that is. And it's certainly the existence of that historical mythos Though inaccurate and bad, and I think in this instance, when they've rewritten these these historical figures in some instances, does not undermine their right to defend themselves or the fact that we should be helping them defend themselves against a Russian imperialist invasion. It's where they do. Because if she wants to play word games and be like, oh, you just like Nazis, like you, oh, you're making defense for Nazis. The easiest thing I could do to respond to this is just say, you're making defense for imperialists. You're making a defense for the invaders against people for helping those who are actively asking for help. Holocaust revisionism to rehabilitate their war world to Nazi the collaborators. In Poland, is, it, it is illegal to talk about their collaboration in World War II with the Nazis. The question is yeah. whether or not it's acceptable is... to either leave them to get ruled over by Russia or to like help them. I know you're like 20 years old, but like this is kind of messed up what you're doing. You know that, right? Can you answer that question? Why, why not just have the question about whether or not why we, would we help? Why would we help somebody on the other side of the world? I mean, on my end, I'm American. You sound British. So maybe you could justify it more because you're on the same continent, but I'm on a different continent. Well, I think I... Um... from the conversation I had with them, it sounded like they, they implied to me a lot that they were Ukrainian. Are they American? Are they American Ukrainian or what? I, I just, why just feels like we're okay. I just, we, I just weird to see that kind of trading of like identity cards to when it's useful and when it isn't useful. Just sorry. Just from the last conversation I had with them, kind of a little, Hmm. Why does uh, well, that have as to do an, as an international me? community the precedent of letting a country annex territory and uh, invade a country is this a pretty been bad going on for this centuries. Is a, it's a pretty bad precedent to set and now that we've actually had a relatively peaceful and, last and three it's decades so in Europe, specific to annex a annex part of a country is bad but occupying countries for 20 years is fine like why I did I, wait, 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 when did i say occupying for 20 years is fine you support because you're supporting the same imperial structures that occupied iraq for 20 years afghanistan for 20 years 
th this pivot is like like i i somebody needs to do a medical checkup on this person to make sure their that their ankles aren't completely fucking shattered from that pivot oh my god what do you think is going to happen to ukraine after this war it's do going you think... to be indebted to the west for like generations do you think you Ukra... so like... okay okay wait, wait. Do you, would ukrainians <laughs> rather would this ukraine like... wait 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 wait, wait, wait. Would you... this is an inter-imperialist why do you keep war why, do... why is it so difficult it? for you to finish a sentence and have like a, a back and forth dialogue um, Do you think the average Ukrainian would rather anything. be invaded by Russia or indebted to the West for helping them against the invasion of Russia? Ukrainians Honestly, are asking for I don't, help. I don't know. And I, and you poll, you, we have, there's public polling data for this information. There is public polling data for this information. It's not a secret that the Lend-Lease Act, on top of all the aid, we give them the aid. The aid is not debt tied. It's not tied to any uh, anything. The Lend-Lease Act is the stuff that they're going to have to pay off. So a lot of the aid we're giving them in the first place doesn't even come with like reciprocal that you will give us money for this. But some of it is. That's the stuff that's congressionally approved, by the way, for everybody who's like... Joe Biden hasn't declared war. Lend Lease Act was congressionally approved. That, this is public information. Like Ukrainians would say, no, no, stop. We don't want to have to pay for the bombs we're using to defend ourselves. Most people know that if you buy something to defend yourself, you're going to have to pay for it. A lot of this, by the way, and I got to say, kind of gracious, like, and a few people seem to respond to me in almost like a gracious way when talking about it. A lot of this does not come with payment. A lot of it does not come with payment, but a decent chunk does. But it's not that crazy for Ukrainians to understand that if you buy guns from the West, you will have to pay off the guns and the bullets and the bombs that you bought. That's not an insane concept Ukrainians just don't understand right now. Uh, and that if they did, they would choose occupation over paying for a gun. That's like, would I rather pay money for a gun to defend myself when a burglar comes in and shoot him? Or would I rather have the burglar just completely burglarize my house, beat me on the floor and leave and skedaddle? Now nah, I'm a cripple. And now I'm crippled, I think the, is the proper term. It doesn't make any sense. Of course, Ukrainians like understand this concept. And I think we're treating them as kind of stupid when we say, oh, no, they don't. If they knew they had to pay for some of the bobs they're using, they would choose Russian occupation. The polling data clearly shows that the vast majority of Americans, I mean, Americans, Ukrainians, Ukrainians, the vast majority of Ukrainians, over 80 percent, don't want to accept a peace deal where any territory is given to Russia. That includes Crimea. You think you can take those numbers and make it a majority supporting occupation if it means they have to pay for the guns they use? Ridiculous. I don't know. And that's no, not No, you for do me know. You know that most Ukrainians are wanting no, actually, to be assisted I don't, by the West. Because I have the unfortunate, I have the unfortunate effect of not being, you don't understand their language because you don't speak. Russian 83 83 percent of ukrainians want nato okay membership. you're just citing a poll you're not even... <laughs> uh brain dead i've seen what the so fuck many are you telegram... citing black flag pictures I'm... no i'm citing what it was before the war people don't give it it didn't well dude, who cares what it was before number one number one it was not before the war before the war the majority of ukrainians did not want to be part of russia after the war started the majority of ukrainians did not want to be part of russia uh, all the polling that I've seen of the Donbass before and during the war shows that the majority of them did not want to be part of Russia. They might have voted for a party that was sympathetic to Russia, but I do not know why people make the mental leap that you vote for a party that's that wants friendly ties with Russia means you want to be part of Russia. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's not that's not how that works. Does not you think everybody that votes for the for the Kuomintang in, in Taiwan wants to be part of China, even if they want a more friendly business relationship with China? No, that'd be an absurd uh, assertion. But a lot of people make that assertion for Ukraine for some reason, because they have so few straws to grasp on. That's all they can grasp on. There is no polling data anywhere that shows the majority of Ukraine ever wanting to be part of Russia. And this includes the Donbass, by the way, even if you to section off the Donbass and only pull the Donbass even less now that the war has started. So I don't, number one, I don't know why we're talking about data before the war. The war started. The war is here. Now we listen to their opinions now. But even before the war, that wasn't the case. Really? And the reason they're not citing anything is because they don't have anything. They give a shit about, like, language rights and shit like that before or anything. People just wanted to live in peace. So to them, it was, it's probably whatever gets them to, to live in peace again 
the 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 fastest. She's she th this person is actively saying I do not want to listen to what Ukrainians have to say. I don't care about your polling data. I don't care about that, which shows clearly what the majority of Ukrainians want. All I care about is the perception in my mind the majority of Ukrainians don't care what country is ruling over them. They only care about the the specter of peace. That's all they care about, which the data doesn't reflect that. My conversation with Ukrainians doesn't reflect that. I have no reason to believe that their claim here has anything to it whatsoever. So what's, what's your point? Like, it's not about fighting till... To, to get Crimea for some of these people, it's about like, hey, I don't want to live in a war zone anymore. And you could and you could probably find polls where it shows support for the war is more in Western Ukraine than in Eastern Ukraine, where the war is actually fought. So, I mean, yes, but the, the, they're still not polling data that the majority of Eastern Ukrainians want to surrender land or anything like that because people want peace. But then when you tell them what the price of peace right now would be with the Russians, which means cutting up Ukraine like the Western powers did Africa, right? Then once you tell them that, then they're like, wait, no, no, I'm not going to accept peace at the cost of freedom, which sounds very american makes me blush a little bit doesn't it doesn't make you blush a bit but i mean that's just true so whether or not it's se oh if it's 70 percent in the east and it's 80 percent in the west that's still the majority of them oh like this is it's it's weird where like people in the west are think that ukrainians all want to fight till they get crimea back it's not like really true. Mm, seems to be the consensus, yeah. Or at least, well, it's not just Crimea, right? It's Lugansk, it's uh, Lugansk, Donetsk. Um, it's, it's Luhansk. Zaporizhia. You're, you're, you're on the Ukrainian side. It's Luhansk, not Lugansk. Okay, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Again, aesthetics. You love aesthetics because you actually no, it's not aesthetics. It's me. completely you, aesthetic. Shut you, the fuck you're up. Calling the, you're just calling this shit aesthetics because you don't understand it. So do you think... You, She's such a brat. She, they, I don't know the fucking pronoun. They, they're such a brat. Well, so what, so what's your, so okay, you're in, you're in charge. Of... I'm sorry, I just, I've never heard a more gender neutral voice in my life. It's so androgynous that I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know, the Western countries, what do you, and uh, even Ukraine, fuck it, you get all. What should be, what should be happening right now? In Ukraine? Yeah. Okay, I'm in or charge of Ukraine, well. like Zelensky. It would probably be trying to sign those Minsk agreements and so that Ukraine could become a federal republic. The Minsk That's... agreements were violated on both sides. No one gave a yeah, fuck about the Minsk agreements the, because there the were main... Russian troops in the country for the entire time. You can't have a ceasefire while there are Russian troops in your country. No. One the Minsk agreements didn't work. No one gave a Minsk fuck about the Minsk agreements. Was changed. One of the uh, Minsk accords, Minsk agreements, whatever it was called, uh, main points was that Ukraine would be turned into a federal republic giving more autonomy to the eastern and southern regions of the country, which would render the country neutral because the western side of Ukraine wants more to, to be closer to the west, while the eastern, more industrial parts of Ukraine who export, still export to Russia and whose jobs rely on, on exporting to Russia would prefer to be neutral or even closer in some cases, but I'm pretty sure that's like edge cases. I'm pretty sure for the most part, people want it to be neutral. And again, those accords were violated repeatedly on both sides. They did not work. I don't know. Yes, you keep there's telling also, me why you there's think they're a, a good okay, idea. There's but... also, also can, we, can we be for real? That wouldn't happen now. If, if, if the end, let's say that we were to propose that to Putin, do you think he would accept? Number one, it's a bad idea because all that does is weaken the central authority of the Ukrainian state. It makes it easier for the Russians to invade in the future war. But putting that aside, do you think the Russians would be like, OK, we're going to take all of our troops out of Crimea. We're going to take all of our troops. We're giving back Crimea upon you becoming a federal republic. We're giving you back Donetsk. We're giving you back. Lohan, we're giving you back everything. And you're going to become a federal republic. No. Because the Russians have put all their chips on the table here and went all in, now it's a, now for them it's an all or nothing battle. Or either they win and get everything they could have wanted, or everything that they could scrape away, including all these territory annexations and hardcore Russian nationalist fervor, or they lose, Putin's government is humiliated and probably collapses. Maybe not the country collapses, but his government falls around him. Videos of Zelensky 
going to these nationalist battalions that were is that doing the majority yeah. of fighting okay. in in the east trying to stop these guys to disarm these guys and they weren't respecting him they weren't listening to him it's it was an open secret that here's the polling despite continued claims to the contrary from moscow and pro-russian separatists 89 percent of respondents oppose russia sending troops to protect russian-speaking citizens including 78 percent of the people that's so being so-called protected in eastern ukraine damn damn 89 percent for the south 93 percent for central ukraine and 99 percent for western by god damn damn not even close Zelensky couldn't control these nationalist battalions in the east for a while like you could say whatever you want Zelensky started this uh, started his political career as a pro peace candidate they can keep saying they can keep saying this all they want but again they think this is egg on the face of Zelensky I think this is egg on the face of the Russians showing that it was impossible for literally anyone anyone to make peace with them under their current administration the native Russian speaker. So you did half the story. The only, there. Minsk the only were broken on both sides. Yeah, I know. There, the were Russian green there was ceasefire. Never violence. left. They never. They never left Eastern Ukraine between 2014 and 2014. There were volunteer Putin admitted battalions. This himself. You you could you could overstate it as much as you want. What did, what did I overstate? At the end there? of the day, what did I what of, did I overstate? The involvement of Russia in the Donbass region. Do you deny that they were there most, between 2014 and 2013? Uh, I don't. I don't deny that they were there, but that's all I said. What did I overstate? Okay, because you're not. Including... So I didn't overstate anything. Okay, go ahead, next point. Yes. Okay, no, you are overstating it. Because what did I overstate? Focusing on... Okay, by by focusing on what what Russia did. I said that you're. you, wait, you, you oh, said what? I'm no. sorry. This is a steamrolling. This isn't even close. I'm. This is the. This is the. This is the intellectual equivalent of watching Loner Box like hold them. At like arm's length as they're just like swinging their arms like this this that's the intellectual equivalent of what we're watching right now oh you no said no what can Zelensky i finish said. no you said what Zelensky did and i said you told half the story because the minsk but accords were broken only, okay, on but both you're sides using, you're, okay you're you're going this i was from finishing off from approach. what you were saying i was finishing okay. you off no you could no you were bringing another point by uh, i'm saying this was mostly a civil war before uh before the official russia invasion in 2022 you're you keep you keep incorporating russia in this conflict as and making ukraine a proxy in this conflict but you're not including what america and the west has been doing since 2014. they have opened their uh, they have been training these nationalist battalions and you can't even deny this because your boy Vash is somehow got an interview with a NATO officer who who admitted that he trained regular Ukrainian troops before the invasion, which I believe is what the fuck. You could look at that interview later if you guys awesome. want. But he interviewed a NATO officer who said he trained regular Ukrainian troops before. <laughs> uh what? 20 to 22 which which yeah would make because when there was ukraine a civil war a happening when when ukraine okay, had okay, russian okay, troops so, in their territory yeah of course yeah what's wrong okay, with that so you uh, what's wrong so, with getting help when a country is uh taking okay, part in a civil so, okay, war okay okay <laughs> see, see see this is the framing i'm talking about uh, in your case russia is the mastermind of those of rebels in the donbass area i mean putin admitted ukraine that ukraine okay. is is going to help uh, going to asking for help from the west when in reality it's just as much of a puppet of the west as that donbass those donbass separatists are of russia so Re you think that's what are, i'm talking about your one framing one. is very you think ukraine asking for help is the same as them think, being puppets. Do you think Russian as separatists moving their troops in against Ukraine's will? You think this is the same level? Think, how do you know? How do you know it's against no, no, I the need will to... of the people of Donbass? How do you know they're not asking? Polling data, like we were talking about earlier, um, a just general sentiment, uh, personal conversations with people in the Donbass. I mean, it's difficult to get more up-to-date polling data from everybody across both sides of the divide of what is currently controlled by Ukraine, what's currently controlled by Russia. But all the polling data that is available seems to point in one direction. Asking for help of Russia, from Russia. Yeah, and all the polling data before the war also seems to point in a certain direction. Do you think there was a majority of people in the Donbass who wanted 
I think there, I think there are very strong ties to Russia, and it wouldn't surprise me that some of these you people think the actually... some of these people is that how this works? Hey guys, I heard one out of every twenty Texans want to be part of Mexico. Guess we got to give it back. Majority want... of people in eastern Ukraine wanted Russian know. troops to fight We're in their territory. I, I don't know. I feel like it's something. Uh, what the majority? Wait, what kind what, of? What the... What kind of international also, relations no, are we I, where wait, wait, some no. people want to be aligned with Russia, then it's okay to send troops? Like, like you know how Scotland wants to be aligned with the European Union right now? Does that mean the European wait, so Union can you, send troops into Scotland? Okay, you're not even being war consistent here? with your arguments here because you're against the annexation of... Ironically, if... No, 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 no. The, if the EU sent in troops to liberate Scotland from the, from the British, be kind of based. Be a little bit. That, ironically, ironically, but it would be based. Crimea by Russia, even though majority of Crimeans want to be part of Russia. That's why, that's what I just said. Majority of Scottish people want to be part of the EU. That doesn't mean that the EU can send troops into Scotland to fucking annex us. So yeah, of course. That's why okay. your argument about okay. people in the Donbass wanting to be aligned with Russia, that doesn't mean Russia gets to send in fucking troops. Okay. I'm completely okay. consistent on that. Okay, so then we could go back a little bit further. Because now we're going to get to the Euromaidan. Yes, since you don't believe that's a coup. This is where you because... fucked up with the phone call last time. Well, how has that been going? No, no, I didn't. Because that you think phone the phone call... call proves a coup? No, the phone call You said that last time. Something. What does it's it indicate? Not... Oh my god, it's not the totality. You fucking idiots all focus on one thing. I had the same conversation with her when I was like, uh, them. I asked them. Would you have evidence of a coup? And it, it's the same exact thing. They don't have anything. It, it, I've already had this conversation with them before. Thing instead of the totality. Well, no, of what's no. Going I know on. you want me to see that. You're, I... saying, you're saying I can't see the forest for the trees, but I'm just going to demonstrate yes. how, like, we observe when we get a bit closer to look at at least one or two trees, and we find out that they're actually just like plastic trees. No, we trees, could talk you know, about yeah. Yats. We could talk about Yashinek. I think that's his like Yatsenuk, name. Yatsenuk. Yeah, yeah Yatsenuk. Why did he take out IMF loans? What does that indicate because about a they country, were a country that wanted to align with the West, the majority? Yeah, what? Do you not understand what an IMF loan is? What uh, it indicates? Yeah, it's when the West imperializes you and like... Uh, are you being sarcastic or are you... Yes, he is being yeah, sarcastic. I mean, are like, you being... Countries like... You countries understand the predatory nature... No, you understand the predatory nature of an IMF loan. Yeah. So why would you take it out? Is it any why less you, predatory than a Russian loan? You're a country like you're, you're a fledgling. Okay, why, ex, no, but like, nobody's cult, asking like, for Russian loans. Why did he take out a uh, why an IMF loan? Well, no, Yanukovych wanted Russia's loan. It was he would. This is so. So you're okay, just so bringing up in a, in a you're just bringing up so shit in a parliamentary but you're not democracy. As bullet points. So in a, it wasn't a parliamentary de democracy. This was the interim prime minister. He wasn't elected. Yes, he was. Please he was for it. No, he was. He was the interim prime minister, bro. Yeah, so the people... Klitschko was the favorite of the Euromaidan protester. He wasn't in, in government because he's not the guy. Yats the, is the guy, bro. Yatsenuk was the leader of the opposition. What the f He was the leader no, of the opposition no, to... Not, no, he wasn't the only leader. Mm. Klitschko was the more popular one. You can look this up. I could cite you a book right now by... It's called Ukraine in the Crossfire or something that talks about this uh is it ukraine yeah i think is it ukraine in the crossfire by I th they have nothing in order i just look i already had this conversation with them and so i, I almost want to like skip through the section but i already had this conversation they don't have any hard evidence for anything it's all like well i have this circumstantial thing here and another circumstantial thing here it doesn't really prove anything it's like that's all it is it's like there's nothing here i almost don't want to listen to it don't remember this guy <laughs> first cast but i'm trying i yeah because it's pretty hard to like remember things off the cuff like shit like this yeah and also some i'm sorry you brought up euromaidan you cannot be like well let's talk about euromaidan uh, what's wait what you want to like sort like where did i was uh i don't need to rem I, wait this is off the cuff i don't remember well how, how am i supposed to know you brought it up you brought up the conversation. I, ugh, whatever. Somebody's like, yo, you're signing, citing a book? Yeah, this is like an academic. You laughed in the face like of your last interlocutor on this issue. Is it an academic I even, I even cited a guy who is, who's been investigating the Maidan, the Maidan massacre for the last eight years in your chat, I, Ivan 
Kanchanovsky, and he thinks this uh, the Euromaidan was a coup. That is, yeah, so, this like, is, which it, the 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 report that isn't peer reviewed that just has him collecting a bunch of like blurry photos. Yeah, I've seen it, the yeah. Like this is one guy <laughs> who didn't even get peer reviewed. I'm he's not he's not wrong by the way. He's not wrong. It, there's nothing there. I've looked into this as well because like Jackson Hinkle and others will say they were snipers and they were and they were actually making it look like that Yanukovych's government was slaughtering protesters when really they were secret Ukraine Nazi spy. It's like it's deluded nonsense. And just okay, he's not just one by guy. Fucking, like, the there was media, there so. was the other guy I cited to you that wrote a really actually a really in-depth book about the life of Bandera and his influence on the U Ukrainian diaspora and subsequently the new Ukrainian nation post 91. I don't care, but like Okay, yeah, of course you wouldn't care. You wouldn't well, why why would she why should we care? It has nothing to do with the topic at hand. Back to Yatsenuk. <laughs> The leader like, of- we, we, we moved on to Euromaidan, and now you're like, well, let's go back to Ukraine being a Nazi state. And it's like, no, we've already moved on. And again, we've already covered Victor. The opposition, he was the leader of the opposition party. That's why he became prime minister after Yanukovych fled. He was voted in, and he <laughs> made the decision who? to take- By who? Alone. It was the interim government. <laughs> Bro, you keep saying voted in. Keep pretending it's like it was a it was a democratic vote, but, but who? So who voted for Yats. He was he was, wasn't he appointed by the parliament? He was majority by the rest of the parliament, the Rada. Okay. Okay. Because that's what elected represents. Because so okay, so Yanukovych flees the country. They they need to appoint somebody to be leader until they can have a democratic election. Well, like, let's be like, if if that was to happen in any other country, do you think they could just go flash election, bang, vote for whoever? Like, no, they need time to like get a campaign together, get the you know set up polling. They need time to do that, and they had to have a leader in the meantime. And that he was the leader in, leader in the meantime. He didn't become uh, elected president, and he was basically outing. That was it. Elected represent when so when your leader flees the country because we he fought hold an election by getting the Wavelength. police. To, they did hold an election afterwards. Yeah, and they elected a pretty hardcore nationalist, uh, Poroshenko. Yeah, I yeah. remember. Okay, so we are we're pro elections or are we against them? Oh no, um, uh, Ukraine is a very corrupt country. Those so elections are fair. Had, they're about so, as fair as Russian elections or like. What are, or like Romanian election. So Yatsenuk. <laughs> Wait, are we are, really? Are we really say, dude, get the fuck out of here. Really? Are we gonna, so is the new claim? Okay, all of the research I looked into, and this was really important for me because I do know that Ukrainian elections have had problems. When Zelensky was elected, I get, because Petro Poroshenko ran against Zelensky and Zelensky won. Petro Poroshenko did not manipulate the system to beat Zelensky. All of the monitors agree on that. All of the respected people who watch the polls on election day agree that the entrance polls seem to match what the actual votes were, that the election was done relatively freely and fairly, and Zelensky won. He became leader, and there was a peaceful transfer of power. That is big for me because that means that there is a democracy in Ukraine, that there is an ability for democracy to succeed in Ukraine because we've seen it succeed in that election. And if they can continue to deal with the corruption, deal with, with the fact that we cannot trust in individuals, but trust in institutions, deal with that and trust in those institutions, build those institutions, Burns is deal with the corruption, immoral, then corrupt we can say a flourishing Facebook, democratic Ukrainian state. That's the dream that Ukrainians are looking forward to post-war that's what a lot of ukrainians are fighting for in this war and when i've talked to them the idea that this is a fight for democracy a war of democracy is on the mind of many soldiers and many aid workers and many activists in ukraine and so i i mean they can say whatever they want about russian elections or ukrainian elections all day they can complain about them um when we talk about this specific ukrainian election the one that got to Lindsay in office it was done freely, it was done fairly, and there was no foul play that has been discovered by any reporter that I that I know of any of any respect. So it is not I don't think it is comparable to say the sham that happened in Crimea. Had Yatsenuk 
Yeah, like, I'm not defending any of these people. I'm not pro any of these people. I just want to specify, like, all of these people are corrupt pieces of shit. So Yatsenuk had a mandate because the former president fled the country after he had got his fucking police guys to, sh to fire on protesters. And that was after, by the way, that was after what's Ra wrong with doing that? A leader of the right sector said he wouldn't accept uh, any any agreement by the current government. Yeah, I don't. I it's not that surprising that a lot of the the activists were like, "No, we don't. These negotiations are shit. They murdered us. They murdered us." He is he is repealing legislation that he said he would back. He has lied to us and he murdered us when we came out to the street. The Prakut the, and the Tutushkis have brutalized us. We will not accept negotiations. We will not accept a deal. And instead of continuing with negotiations with Klitschko and the others, he decided to flee the country because he saw the risk of full-blown rebellion. And he didn't want to deal with it because he knows that right now the tenor was against him and he was screwed if that did happen. Not that it necessarily would have happened. But I do think that if he did stay, it probably would have. But that he, he was so afraid of that that he ended up fleeing the country. You know that, so right? So you think the right sector was in charge of the Maidan? Yeah, I think they were a pretty influential group in Maidan. Why don't, like, why is it so hard? I mean, the so, general of the Ukrainian so army had him as a, uh, had the leader of right sector as his military advisor at some point. Yeah, that must be so, why, they, that's, that must be why they've dominated the elections ever since. There must oh be my such god, you don't need group. to run fucking elections if you have they did so run many elections, people though, in your fucking army or in your police. Uh, well, but, but, they, <laughs> but they ran elections and they didn't get the votes. <laughs> They don't need because it's not popular. I'm I'm yeah, not saying that not any popular. of these things, any of these people or this ideology is popular. I'm saying that they have a lot of power and influence, especially for their uh, size. This like Jesus man. I just like, wonder <laughs> when you have a nation where the majority of them want to lean more towards uh, the West, like with the European deal, as opposed to the Eurasian customs, when the president denies them that, flips on them, after making a pretty strong statement that he was going to go the European way, then basically throws in like a bunch of anti-protest laws that effectively ban protesting and give immunity to the police. When True, this is an important part, I forgot to mention this. And they kill protesters, and to civilians as well. Um, why do you think it's so unthinkable that people would get angry and rise up against that. Oh, it's nothing wrong. You don't believe with in a people's revolution? Protests. Oh my God, it, it, dude, you don't understand the... First of all, okay, where to start with this? First of all, it's the main anywhere. people who were first, just because people have an uprising doesn't mean they're not, it's not a reactionary uprising or anything like that. People, people, pro, uh, right wingers protest all the time. Doesn't mean you support a people's. That that's a, that's not a people's uprising. You wouldn't call that a people's uprising. But your only indication that what's your indication that the right wingers dominated this uprising? Um, the, my in, my indication that they had an oversized influence in the post Maidan government. I uh, see how the words are changing. It's not. Well, they didn't dominate the uprising, but after the uprising, some of the right wingers had an outside. Like, see how the words are changing, and it's now. Well, maybe, maybe it wasn't a right wing revolution. Maybe it was kind of generally just the people of Ukraine. But and like now, like the goalposts are moving. It's like, jeez. Oh, and, and in the protest is that they were the ones that were starting all the fights there. The I believe the sniper, the, the sniper fire, potentially being a false flag. This is all your Ivan. Remember so like, much shit. Yeah, this is no, your, your this Ivan is, like no, iPhone this picture, is, this blurry. Is, this where's Waldo pictures? This is an only pictures? Ivan, by the way. This is an only him, by the way. Who there, else was that? A, where, uh, let me see. Uh, you know John Paul uh, Himka. He's the one that discovered that Christia, Christia Friedland's. Uh, grandfather was a Nazi collaborator. <laughs> okay. A very, very good historian for Ukrainian history, because especially of... in the development of the Ukrainian national so... identity that you, for some reason, are okay with, like the Western Ukrainian national identity that you're okay with today.
that's well, I, i'm okay with them actually... so far as they're defending themselves against a foreign invader yeah sure. just because bro just because i don't somebody... think just because okay, you're right okay, i'll give you a good example i'll give you a good example do you know uh, the polish second republic was just about as anti-semitic as uh, as germany was at the time okay the oun was born because of the oppression the ukrainians uh, faced during the polish second republic the nationalist government of the Polish Second Republic was terrible. I don't, I, just because just cause they were defending the, themselves against the Nazis at the time doesn't mean they were the good guys, you know? Yeah. Stalin coming in and taking East Poland was probably better for the people there in the long run than uh, the Polish Second Republic. That's how. Wow. Do you disagree? Because I'm because sorry, I'm re sorry, reaction, sorry. I, a, a people's government, or as close as you could get to at that time, being the Bolsheviks, is better be living. It's better to live under the Bolsheviks yeah, as a Polish that, it was Jew. That, it was that old. Uh, I, what did we say about Nazi collaborators? But I guess it's a, probably it's all right when like uh, when a, when the USSR literally collaborates with the Nazis to break up a country together. Wait, I thought we had no. Was, I thought I thought we you were think all that uppity was a about Nazis. Oh yes, my God, they dude, literally this broke is, up the country this just, together. This is just Holocaust. They literally. This is Fuck not. You. What do you mean it's Holocaust? People just love to erase the suffering of Polish people under the Soviet Union. People love to erase them, man. There's a reason why the Solidarity Movement was so successful in Poland. It was because they were pretty fucking angry at the Soviet Union. May they literally broke oh up. The, God, no. They exchanged prisoners. The fucking Soviets gave like people who fled from the KPD back to the Nazis. What are you talking? Of course, with fucking collaboration. Yeah, uh, they had, yeah, they, they had, had economic. They had economic, they had economic. They had economic so exchanges. Cool. They were selling fucking raw materials to each other. Yeah, yeah of course. Dude, what are you talking about? Of course yeah, Stalin was trying to get as much as possible to prepare for the fucking invasion oh. why did he have to split up poland he did not have to split up poland he did not need to make it that much more difficult for the poles to defend themselves against the germans the, the poles could have fought longer against the germans they could have taken down more german soldiers shot down more german planes and done more damage before hitler was done if it wasn't for the Soviets assisting in the invasion and invading from the rear and splitting up the country, assisting Hitler's onslaught. If they didn't do that, it would have been more difficult for Hitler and easier for the Allies to try to make up a game plan if the Soviet Union wasn't decidedly saying, I will not do anything whatsoever. Free reign, I'll split it up with you. Oh, he it was like, like a tactical allegiance just to prepare to attack the Nazis, right? No, not to attack the Nazis because he knew he was going to get attacked by them. Do you do you not know what people are bringing it up in chat? The Poles had a plan, right? They had a vague idea of a plan. I'm not saying it would have been successful. It was still a Hail Mary, but that plan was smashed once the Soviets joined in. They actively helped the Nazi invasion of Poland. People can rewrite it. They can try to like pretend that didn't happen. They can try to explain it away. They helped the Nazis invade Poland the same Nazis who would later set up death camps in Poland. Their mistake then led to many, many deaths later. Absolutely. What the Lebensraum is, it was part Not of- Not to mention their own mass deportation of Poles from Poland. So the, whole the whole basis of the Nazi ide ideology was A, a racial the a, 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 Amer America's racial theory uh, imported to uh to mix with the with, with germ uh german national identity which is why you get like the 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 crazy anti-semitism i get levied against the jews by the nazis like the hot like the extermination of them was the extermination of the jews and the slavs and all the people that live in eastern europe to them to the nazis was like america conquering the west like do you not understand that yeah, that I guess it's probably idea, a bad idea, idea for Russia idea, to be giving like, raw materials like, to the Germans. Be, <laughs> it's probably the, a bad ideologically, idea for that. Like, these people cannot be allies, and you and you just holy shit, you're fucking stupid. But bro. no, like but you, you do wait, not wait. understand. You you do not understand the ideology of Nazism. Yet you probably use that comparison and call people Nazis all the time. Do you think like, that you, it was inevitable that just because Hitler hated Slavs, he was going to fucking commit suicide by trying to attack the Soviet Union? Yes, because oh, the, okay. And the oh my God! I, okay, the there, tactical there's a, breaking there's up an of a amazing, country. Oh my God! There's an amazing book by Adam Tooze called "The Wages of Destruction," 
that outlines Germany's econo economic uh, history from throughout uh, it, through the, throughout the Nazi period. And he states from the very beginning, because Germany was was dependent on importing of raw resources like iron and uh, grain. Fun fact, Dylan: Socialist Woody Guthrie wrote music supporting the USR, USSR Nazi Pact, and only changed his stance on them once they invaded the USR. At at which point he became Mister This Machine Kills Fascists. Is that true? I would like a link on that. In that it would it was always dependent on the West. Uh, not the like the West, but like America, Britain, and France, and the Soviet Union, and that it was always going to be. Why is it that all the people who rightfully call out anti-Polish sentiment in the UK and so many other countries where Poles have gone to work, that they, when they call this out, they're like, they're like, yes, yes, and I agree with them, hundred percent, yes, the Poles are respectable people, they're hardworking people, they deserve respect. But then when it comes to being honest about how the USSR treated Poland. All of the sudden, all of these people who were so supportive of Poland earlier will like turn on their head and be like, "What are you talking about? I don't, I don't know. What do you mean? What? What do you mean? So you're so, the, the the Poles loved it. The Poles loved Poland. They were liberated. They were liberated by the Nazis. They they welcomed them with open arms. Why did Why did Stalin let Warsaw burn during the Warsaw Uprising? What about that? Look, there's so much we can go into. Oh my God, that why Poles have a have a very bad taste in their mouth permanently on not only the Soviet Union, but in communism as an ideology because of what the USSR did. Be dominated by them. And Hitler wanted his own, uh, he wanted the German people to be on top, to be its own hegemony, its own great power, and not just a middling economy. Like, you have to understand that Germany wasn't as rich as France and Britain and America at mm -hmm. that time. It would, they were still poor. They were like a middling economy. And they were reaching like the end of its capitalist expansion because there was nowhere else to go. Like Britain had colonies. French had col France had colonies. America had colonies. And so Hitler, by the logic of capitalism and, and what he saw other, other countries doing, he figured that... He could cut, he could take Eastern Europe and apply the same logic that these other colonial powers did to say to make Germany like a great power, a unequal to the to the British, to the French, and to the Americans. It was inevitable for Hitler to invade Eastern Europe because he needed the raw resources and he needed the living space. There was no reason, there's no good reason that he, he could have just told Hitler when it was like, want to invade Poland with me? He could have been like, no, don't invade Poland. And then Hitler would have had to fight Poland on his own. But no, he made it that much easier for Hitler. There's no good excuse for it. For the, for German agriculture to bloom and uh, blossom or whatever you want to call it. And he also needed oil from the Caucasus because he's, that's also another thing he was dependent on. So. Let me be clear. I'm not saying that in the long term, Stalin, even though they're, you know, the so the USSR axis talks like I don't want to get into that. I don't think long term Stalin and Hitler ever could have built like a deep personal friendship and be friend dictators forever. But his like try type of like, oh, I'm going to like, you know, political gamesmanship my way into influence and more power as I prepare to take over all of Europe later. That led to throwing how many Polish people under the bus? Throwing all of Europe under the bus. On, on ironically, and not to mention the treatment of Poles and other people that the Soviet Union uh, conquered uh, later on, not uh, or the Poles just then the deportations that took place, the killings that took place in Poland. So I just it's just it it just gets under my skin when people try to make excuses for this, like oh no, it was, you know he was playing like 4D chess. Well, it seems like he treated the Polish people like pawns. Oh yes, po yes, like. The, not, the goal of Nazism was to expand and create a greater Germany. Like, it, it, whether you think it was illogical, it was. It was stupid. And, like, Adam, too, is, it goes through it in very nice detail explaining how stupid it was. But it, that, was, that was the logic behind it. It was, just, it was the same logic the British, the French, and the Americans used to expand into uh, to expand their
Nerza, thank you so much for the 5,000 point reward to ask for subs. If anybody wants me to uh, go to Poland, uh, help me go to Poland so I can uh, go cheers to Stalin's death in a pool of piss. Uh, any donations and subs will go towards my travels in Europe as I head back towards Ukraine to do more filming. So if anybody wants me to do a cheers uh, to Stalin's death, uh, please do donate and sub in the stream chat or, or even better, the site chat where all the money goes to me and my editors. Vampires. So we're really far from the point now. I just... Dylan Burns Tv in your search bar if you want to uh, check out the site chat. Just a couple of questions. Uh, yeah, but you like, brought it up. Do you? You, brought it, you <laughs> keep bringing up stupid like, points, and I have to go into into this. Well, you just you just seem it's, it's just funny how your sympathy. Explain why you're fucking stupid. It's just funny and how like your sympathy for your like, sympathy you for Nazi anything, collaborators. You just keep like, all this shit it's just up, funny bro. that your sympathy for Nazi collaborators seems to take I'm a very not, big like uh, I'm jump not, when it comes to Soviet. You're literally supporting the people who are making the ability. I just wanted to I just wanted to ask you. So November twenty fifth, nineteen forty, when Stalin asked to join the Axis powers, was that just a meme or what? Oh my god, 1940, bro? They had plans, to, Hitler had plans to invade Germany, I mean, to invade the Soviet Union so since 1939. When, so when Stalin Holy asked, shit, he was buying time. How do you not understand You know the fake this? laughter isn't getting you anywhere. I just want to ask you, I'm not, when Stalin I don't, wrote a draft dude, just, to propose to join the Axis powers, was he oh memeing or what? I just want to know. Well, like, he was you... probably buying time like he was before. Her answer is literally, he was memeing, by the way. Holy shit. Which, I mean, you could say that. But either way, even in the most best interpretation of Stalin, that this was all just four or five D chess, he still threw how many poles under the under the under the table uh, and, and under the way of this this moving onslaught of violence. He threw how many in the in the way and and delayed his entry into the war for how long? That that made it dip more difficult for France to stand up and defend itself. Belgium, the Netherlands, made it more difficult for uh, for the Poles to defend themselves. I mean, really undermined so many countries' defenses by making it so a war on two fronts was not possible. It was just shit strategy that probably cost who knows how many millions of people their lives. That's the best interpretation you can make of Stalin. The worst interpretation is that he was actually willing to basically just carve up all of Europe into a Soviet a German pact because Stalin was just a power megalomaniac and he just wanted to take over as much land as possible and he just wanted the Germans to stay out of the way and they could divide, devy up their empires. And if you look at the Axis, at the Soviet proposal to join the Axis, it really is generous to Soviet demands. So if it really was like a delaying mechanism, why was it so generous to Soviet demands and not generous to German demands so the Germans would entertain it more? Stopping, either stopping an invasion, slowing an invasion down, buying them more time. That does make me think that it possibly had some seriousness, seriousness to the proposal, at least to carving up Europe temporarily. Dude, like, so this is helping a the Nazis fact, economically I don't even know why I'm transfer, like, trying to transfer, entertain so, you on so, this. Okay, so just to be clear then, helping the Nazis economically, uh, transferring prisoners and, over uh, to Germany, the Nazis, Germany helping also the Nazis break up Poland to together, Union, asking to join the Axis the powers, ask, that those, all those things were just all like strategy, right? Memeing. Trolling. Okay, so, okay. So, so, why do you think of the? <laughs> oh my God! Oh my what God! What do you think of the? Oh okay, what do you think hmm. about the Baltic states being under Stalin's control, uh, inviting the Germans in when as liberators, or like the UPA? How do you see that? I think when you're being occupied and you're. Uh, people who oppose the occupation are being put into fucking like uh prisons just as political prisoners are getting lined up and executed then yeah uh, there's about a very educated population they're probably going to be desperate yeah of course that what would you okay so okay so you know like okay. the night the way can i just say the people who are most angry about the upa when talking about you when we talk about ukraine the first conversation brings up the upa and the horrific crimes and like that's why we shouldn't support ukraine you ask those same people about stalin and they will spend all night and all day trying to defend joseph stalin's worst atrocities hold the more i don't know what you're talking about they're just going to go through the full list they're going to defend everything that he ever did why because for them it's not about the atrocities of these people it's because they're not part of their political camp Nazis and the Soviets used the same prison spaces. They used exactly the same facilities in the Baltic states going back and forth because their approach to political prisoners was basically the same. <laughs> you think, you think Jews were political prisoners? 
<laughs> Can you stick to the point? Wait, wait, wait. Why does that? No, you, you compare. Um, I, I just wanted to give man. you an easy out, and you just did the the typical double genocide. Thing. I'm just asking. I was trying you, to explain they to used you the same prison facilities for their political prisoners, the Nazis and the uh, Soviets. Okay, but what does that? What's, doesn't, it what's makes your perfect point? sense that the people living under that occupation might be who don't have that much education would probably feel duped or like feel desperate enough to uh want to like to try and get out of that by any okay, means but you see how you're excusing these people for doing the holocaust but uh when did i uh, excuse uh, them from doing the holocaust you're just now now because the people you're saying that were stupid and being duped they did the Holocaust. Those were the people that went out and killed, uh, killed or rounded up Jews. I'm those not talking. Wait, who do you think I'm those, talking the, about? I'm not talking about the, the collaborators. I'm not talking about the collaborators who took part. I'm just talking about like the average people who lived there, who lived under but Soviet average, occupation. How do you know what? How do you know what the average person thinks? We only know what the what the collaborators thought, and what the what like people who were who. who you don't actually know we, what the average person. We know in, that like, the people. We know that the people living there. Denial box again, were, SMA. No, did believe you don't know. that the Nazis were going to liberate them. Yeah, that was a, that was a common thing. Do you deny you, that? You, you, the people in the Baltic states. I think I think some of the people, the nationalists, the people who were uh, who who had strong a strong uh, na the people who did, the people who don't like being fucked by the Soviet Union. Yeah. No. No, there, not, there was nobody who was like, I don't like Stalin. You know, he seems to kill everyone. Not a nice guy. I don't want him to rule my country. Like all of those people were just fools. All of them were just Nazis. All of them were just nationalists. You are literally Joseph Stalin or Hitler. There's no in between. You either are Zig Heiling and you hate the Jews and you just want them all to die. Or you're literally like, uh, or, or you're like, the, you're like fucking Pol Pot. You see anybody with glasses, you got to freak out. And you got to shoot them, right? Like there, 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 there's differences between these two groups. Okay, there's, there's like, there is a in between that is neither of these things that you can be that you're not either a Nazi or literally Stalin. Nationalists, the ones that did the Holocaust, were pro-German. Most people would have probably been. By the way, there I don't want to get into the specifics, but nationalist Ukrainians actually had a ton of disagreements about whether uh, they should work with the Germans or not work with the Germans. Some of them collaborated with the SS, and Steph, I think Stefan Bandera actually ended up, a lot of people in the UP actually ended up getting killed due to like infighting and type of stuff. I don't remember if Stefan Bandera specifically was killed due to that type of infighting. I don't remember exactly the history of uh, the specific like back and forth killings. But there was a lot of info in, in the UPA about this and in the wider Ukrainian nationalist community, because while the, the Germans were putting up posters trying to advertise like Adolf Hitler as the great liberator and, and they would write this stuff in like Ukrainian to try to like translate that to Ukrainians that look, we're we're breaking off the shackles. Of, of the Soviet Union and their oppression of you, um, a lot of Soviet uh, Ukrainian nationalists basically said that, look, this this all this does is trade one oppressor for another. Uh, what, even though the, the Soviet Union did the whole of the war and they starved us and they did this and that, um, the Germans are going to be uh, just as oppressive, if not more oppressive. And there was actually a lot of disagreement in the nationalist community over that. Neutral. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I don't think you understand that. Neutral like, maybe... observers of Soviet occupation. Yeah, people who want to go on with their lives like it was before. It's not uncommon for people who who are who become occupied by different countries who would just like accept the occupation and just try to live out their normal <laughs> what? lives. What? Dude, no. Wait. People who are under occupation typically don't want to be under occupation. And sometimes those it people, depends. regardless really of depends. whether or not they're nationalists it's or anti-Semitic, might find themselves yes. in positions where they are people desperate enough strong... to accept any like uh, to accept anything you, that might end the occupation they're currently who, under. People who would have a strong feeling about the so uh, who, people who would have a strong feeling about the Soviet occupation that would be so strong that they would see the Germans as the liberators were to people that were doing the Holocaust. People who just wanted to go on and try to live their normal lives to not side with one or the other openly. So my understanding it's like, of the Baltics like is that right when, now, is that now, when like, people- Can I just finish? Can I give you a modern day No, example? no, you, you've monologued to fuck. Like the problem is, is that when, I, I think you, you find it really difficult to understand like, 
just like very basic understandings of human behavior. Just, people no, who are under the Soviet a, occupation and they don't like the you, people that they you're, know. You're doing they, the, they don't like. We, we, they don't. Oh, I'm just going to keep talking. Like and we'll see if we get through this. Okay? <laughs> and they don't like. They don't like the fact that they're being occupied. They get this like um like false promise that the germans are going to come in and liberate them they're probably sold in it for a bit and then they eventually realize that when the nazis arrive they're like fucking killing jews they're carrying out the holocaust and then they decide that they don't like nazis either like this is not a very like uncommon thing to expect from from the, the, the average human being not that crazy at all they're the reason why there's actually a polling change in the view of Russia, uh, the view of Russia in Eastern Ukraine, where Russia used to be viewed more favorably, and they used to see Russia kind of like a fatherly or brotherly like nation. And a lot of that perception has been shattered in Eastern Ukraine because they're like, oh my God, my village is fucking gone. And like that perception that Russia tried to give Eastern Ukrainians has, for a majority, for the vast majority of them, been completely smashed, shattered. I don't I think mean, do you think like or... I don't think everyone who opposed I... that's the question though is like what like do you think like it was like if you opposed Soviet occupation that had to mean that you wanted to be like a Nazi collaborator? I am I muted or am I still here? I never muted you. Oh shit, I didn't I didn't that you said something. Okay. I think people who are openly against an occupation, like protests and stuff like that, are more likely to be collaborators i think people who just went on their daily lives complaining about the, the occupation probably didn't give a shit or just wanted to go on with their lives they were probably the average like latvian who protested against soviet occupation was going to become a nazi collaborator yeah, I think there's a bigger chance of that than like a person who just stayed home. No, no, because the, German, no, 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 the Germans no, 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 occupied Latvia. The no. Germans occupied Latvia. It's the same. I know, What's the difference? I know. Um, but that's why? What ask, that's what I'm asking you. <laughs> but they I'm, collaborated the whole time, bro. I'm like, asking you. I'm not asking you about comparing them to people who just stayed home. I'm asking you about if you think the average person who was opposed to the occupation, just that, was like likely, was like, had a high chance of being a Nazi collaborator. Yeah, people who protested against the Soviet Union occupation had a higher chance and probably a good chance of being a collaborator with the Nazi regime. That's that's just the fact. Just higher, like that's higher than people who just, conversation. just bought their heads Come down. On. That's not what I'm asking you, though. I'm not disagreeing with that. Okay, yeah, I would go, I would go as so far as to say they had a, a high chance of being collaborators if they, if they were very politically active. If they, were, if they identified as nationalists, All these addendums. Yes. So my next question is, and again, I think the bit that you maybe sometimes leave out of these stories is that a lot of these nationalists ended up fighting against Nazis as well, right? Okay, I, I don't know. I don't know every nationalist group that fought with the Nazis. And then that I know that you I know Ukrainian history a bit more. So I could tell you, even though officially Bandera said that he was against Ger uh, Nazi Germany because they wouldn't give Ukraine independence right away, mm -hmm. and he was technically a, a in a concentration camp even though he was in the VIP section of the concentration I mean, he lost camp. His along to, uh... with, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm I'm sorry. The the sentence he was in the VIP section of the concentration. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's continue. Nazis as well. Yeah, he? his bro his two brothers. He was treated differently than other people in the concentration camp. That is true. But the sentence, VIP section of the concentration camp. I just, I just can't. He was technically in a concentration camp. Just went to Auschwitz. Bandera. Mm -hmm. Basically, we're constantly trying to convince Bandera to collaborate with the Germans and to and to accept the creation of a German kind of proxy Ukrainian state. And like, eventually, he died. Uh, he he didn't end up doing it. If I remember correctly, I didn't go to Auschwitz. He went to another concentration camp, and I believe there are other political prisoner, fascist political prisoners, staying with him. Like I think the Romanian Iron Legion was there and shit like that. I I don't remember, or Iron Guard or whatever. The the Romanian fascists they they shared the same the a cell with him. I think, but the UPA, even though officially they were against both the Nazi occupation and the Soviet occupation on the ground, more likely than not, the UPA worked with the Nazis uh, to round out the Jews, mm -hmm. mostly. And then when the Soviets were coming in in 43 and 44, they were fighting together against the Soviet invasion. 
And as the Nazis were retreating, the UPA and all those nationalists, they retreated with the Nazis to avoid being captured by the Soviets. So if you were fighting against an occupation, you wouldn't be retreating with your enemy, right? So thanks for and taking could... a very long time to indicate that you just didn't listen to a fucking word I said. So clearly you are acknowledging, at least it seems to be the case, that across Eastern Europe, there were nationalist groups who opposed Soviets, then even some of them who did collaborate with the Nazis ended up opposing Nazis afterwards because nationalism doesn't in doesn't inevitably make you a Nazi, right? Like, yeah, that's, and that's why I yeah, would ask you. I, or, yeah, wait, yeah, kind nationalism of nationalism inevitably nationalism? makes wait, nationalism. Does Na nationalism what? inevitably make you a Nazi? That, that is politically illiterate. If, if that is the conclusion that this person has come to, is that nationalism inevitably leads to Nazism. Nazi. There's a lot of Irish Nazis then, man. They're all just uh, the Irish nationalist, Algerian nationalist Nazis, man. Algerian nationalist Nazis. Marcus Garvey was doing the was doing the was doing the boots. He was doing the goose step. Everything, man. He he had the whole swastika get up. You yeah, just said yes, it, it does. It, 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 they both have the same basis of belief. Wait, yeah. having the same basis of belief doesn't mean one inevitably becomes the other. Yeah, you, you must see you, Nazis you everywhere. Start, then. You no could, wonder you're fucking no, you, coming over these you black flags. Like. You, you could start as a nationalist and become an ultra nationalist. I, I, wait, do you know what inevitably means? Do I have to say it for a third time? Oh yeah. If you, you think the okay, Scottish fine. National Party is is like are are like comparable to Nazis? Okay, buddy. You think the PLO that... are nationalists? Are they going to become Nazis one day? I don't know. Maybe if what the fuck? A this strong, is the, the, I, I'm sorry, I, I know it. Why did you go to that? Movement. That was the most uncontroversial statement I've ever made in my fucking life, and now it's like, oh well. <laughs> actually, know, when you think about it, nationalists must really. You're, you're trying to make this. You're trying to be like, oh, not no, all nationalists are bad. Bad, but you're a socialist. You're supposed to be opposed to nationalism, which doesn't make sense. Like. I'm talking about European nationalism, by the way, for people who don't understand it. Do you don't who think, wait, do you, wait, I'm just, I just wonder, like, it's such an obvious thing. Like, do you not think some forms of nationalism can be about, like, can be liberatory or emancipatory? Like, do you not, just deny that? Not, uh, other than Irish nationalism, um, any... Palestinian nationalism? Any Cuban that's nationalism? Different. I'm talking about, I'm talking about European nationalism. We're talking about... A specific type of national Cuban nationalism is completely different. Well, there were, there, but, 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 but I'm pretty sure we just acknowledged though that there were Eastern European nationalists who opposed both Soviets and Nazis. That's the case today yeah, as well. Yeah, but they were reactionaries. When you go in, when you go into, wait, they were nationalist reactionaries. When you, this is a European type of nationalism. You can be a national. You can be a nationalist who wants to be like a social democrat. You can be a nationalist liberal. You don't need to be like a reactionary national unless you think you probably think they're all reactionaries, that's, right? Yes, right. I do think they're all reactionaries. You think and historically, you think, do you think they were Demo all Social democrats, social fascists is like an accurate, uh, dude. Prescription. I mean, it's kind of a meme, but. The reason why they're called social fascists is because of the time period this took place in, right at the edge of like the Great Depression and the collapse of the Weimar. So at that point, when a liberal or when a rad lib or a certain person reaches the limit of allowing democracy to flourish, if there's like a threat of a left, left wing taking over these liberals, these nationalist liberals or whatever you want to call. Can I be for real? This person, I have a, I have a low, I have a very low opinion of people who don't believe innately, like in democracy. Like, if you believe that if you lose an election, that you just like kick up the table and throw up the table and you say fuck it, like like the Trump people did, and how humiliating and bad that was for the country. If you believe that for the left as well, like I have very little respect for you. And this person gives me that vibe that let's say, like for example, if uh, let's say the conservatives won in Australia. Like the, the solution is overthrow the government, start shooting everybody. Just like, like that type of political radicalism, extremism, instability that it, you don't really believe in democracy. You just believe in like whatever you believe in, in, like is your way or the highway. Fuck the system. I don't believe in institutions. I believe in ideology. We'll usually go towards the ultra nationalist fascist camp. You know, like the old saying, scratch a liberal, a fascist belief. Yeah, it's the, like, one of the dumbest, most reductive statements I've ever heard in my fucking I life. I mean, this, like, yeah, because, I, I, I don't know, like, how, mean, how much, um, about... how much KP...
Do you think anybody who would say, yes, I'm a, I'm a Native American nationalist, I believe in my tribe and the few thousands of us that are left, we need to make sure to preserve our culture for generations to come and tighten it. Nazi. Nazi. Inevitably, you will be a Nazi. Like, get, the, get out of here. KPD collab like a KPD involvement with Nazis that there have to be for people to realize well I mean, we're not really that much there wasn't any involvement there were the first ones in concentration camps the what Prussian the, the Prussian Landtag KPD, referendum you talking about you're the talking rail about strikes the, KPD. the beefsteak Nazis yeah what are you talking about fighting shadows again Dylan this person literally said literally said if you are a nationalist you inevitably become a Nazi. I am showing you an example of something that would be ridiculous to say this person is a Nazi because they believe in, in a nationalist view of their Native American history, nationalist view of uh, Algeria and during the Algerian Revolution, right? I said European nationalist. Are you the person on screen? Are you actually the person on the call? Oh my God. Okay. It's well, no wonder you make no sense. Sorry. You're, you're giving me little tiny examples, but the KPD was trying the to first... dissolve a local parliament because there was an SPD guy there, communists and Nazis collaborating in order to do that. You know, it's tiny. Again, you give me a local parliament, like I don't know, I don't know the exact specifics of that one, and this is what I'm talking about. You're giving me bullet points. You're not connecting it to a wider. Uh, the beefsteak Nazis. A, the a fact wider... that a lot of the, the militants from the KPD were like the most likely ones to end up like defecting to Nazis beefsteak nazis w what are you talking about like i don't know it's the okay, specific you, know, we, example. We yeah. you said okay let's let you know what i'm gonna be more i'm gonna be generous to you and when you say in chat right now you say it was only european nationalism let's say i give that to you i'm not gonna go back and check i don't really give a fuck but let's say you're right would you say kosovar nationalists are inevitably going to become nazis Kosovar nationalists will inevitably become Nazis. Like this is, it's just a silly statement. You could just say, hey, there's a lot of national, like if you become really extreme into nationalism, you can become a Nazi. That's, that's a reasonable, understandable statement. But saying, if you are a nationalist, you will inevitably become a Nazi. That is silly. Yes, they want to become part of greater Albania. You genuinely think that Kosovar nationalists are not... Okay, well, I'm sorry. Like, you're just ridiculous then. Like, I, I'm talking to somebody who lives in an alternate reality. Sorry. You can't all, be, we can't all, we can't all be so learned. You know, it's okay. Jesus Yeah, Christ. you're giving... You, you see, the thing is, when I don't know a historical fact, you cackle like a fucking... Like, like a fucking... No, because you're give, cause I know how you're presenting mm -hmm. it. You're presenting it as a bullet point. I mean, prove it. There is no there is no ideological tie between Kosovar nationalism inherently and Nazism and say that just because somebody believes in the existence of the Kosovo nation or the idea that Kosovo should one day become part of Albania, that inherently means that one day they're going to say all Serbs need to die. A Zig Heil the Kosovo state. Zig Heil Albania. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You're disconnected with no reality. After Labor Day. So, let's upgrade you to Ukraine Gold. Hey, thank you, Blue Rider of Neptune, for giving a tier one sub to Dark Brandon. Hey, we love Dark Brandon here. Thank you for the tier one sub. And subbing on site chat, which is the best place to sub, dylanburns.tv. Type that into your URL. It will come to my website. You can make an account. You can be on screen in the chat room. We even have an offline chat that is sometimes active. Also a Discord as well, but beneath the channel. Support the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Like I'm presenting these as a story. Like a, his, his history is ultimately a narrative and a story. I can and tell that, you a story that's how if you I'm present, want. I'm I just assumed you know, but I didn't know. I assumed you knew because every time I don't know something that you know about history, you cackle like a fucking maniac and tell me I'm because stupid. I don't get, because you're a fucking like I don't know. I don't get paid maybe, for this. Maybe you're just insecure. I don't get paid for maybe this. you're just like you're, you're the one that's getting paid to so talk about getting Ukraine paid doesn't mean shit. I have to know every single historical fact. But I, I mean, guess, you're like I guess you're, you're so, just like a bit insecure about your intelligence. Like, but, uh, but no, but you're again you're getting paid again, to I just talk just, about sorry, history I'm and sorry. politics. I assumed you knew. So I assumed you knew. I can tell you about it if you want. The beef. This part the person needs to stop calling into shows. This is drunk. They come off as unbelievably insufferable. They really need to like call into shows when they're either not wasted or just not call into shows at all. Steak Nazi was just a name that was given to uh, communists, K mostly KPD uh, militants, who defected to join the Nazis. That was how many of them were there, and where did this this play this take place? Where did this take place? This was in. Yeah, um, well, this was mostly between like uh, mid late twenties, early thirties. Okay, and 
was this regional or was this uh, on the fe on the national level of Germany? It looked like it was. I think it might have been more concentrated in certain areas, but it seemed to be like a but national. But what areas? Phenomenon. Yeah. What areas? What areas was it concentrated in? Yeah, I'm curious. So from my memory, I think Bavaria, but I, it's been a while. Bavaria. Okay. That's it. It was. It was. Was it anything in the north? I don't. I don't know. I think it did. Like it okay. happened everywhere. Just whether or not it was to like, like a higher okay. degree than the other. And they're called beefsteak Nazis. Yeah. Why are they called beefsteak Nazis? Because they're brown on the outside and red on the inside. That's the what they're red. called. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh God! Is this is this the the fabled uh, red black? brown alliance that everybody's talking about yeah you know scratch a liberal and the fascist bleed is completely valid but otherwise you know, even though it was like uh, by a lot of liberal states who fought the nazis but okay yeah um i don't know we're going we're, we're, we're going on quite a few tangents here oh my god i'm reading the wikipedia for this and it's, it looks bare bro like, are we done are we done is this it there's only a minute left this is what you <laughs> and and they'll, oh I mean, God. I can find you. I can try and find you the book that this I got is, it from this, as well. If you want. Yeah, is it is it by? Why the are you guy, just glancing? Why, no, why are you just gla no? Why are you just glancing the Wikipedia and cackling again? Oh, I, was you just, so, I was like, just curious. You're just very, you're just, just very curious. prejudiced. You're so curious, you're very, very like, curious. Oh, I love biases in your. <laughs> I fucking yeah, I, hate you. Get the fuck out of here, Jesus Christ! True. <laughs> My God. <laughs> you're so. True. <laughs> True. We need to hate more people. We need to have more hate in our heart. As people, we need to hate more people and express that hate more. We need to do it. We need to express our hate more towards individuals. Dylan, watch a video with me. You just said in chat that I want to defend Nazi youth camps, okay? You're completely impossible to talk to. Do you, do you legitimately think, I, yes, we should sign all the children up to the Hitler youth? You believe I think that? You're impossible. Like, I can't talk to you. You're in a, you're in a completely other world. Completely other world. I'm not going to talk to you. Just, come on. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, Dylan. Fuck that guy. I'll talk to you. Hey, Loaderbox. Yeah, you talk to me. That's more fun than that person talking to me. Hell yeah. Let's talk. Hey, Loner. Hello, Loner. How are you? I'm doing quite well. I was just watching this uh, this debate you had. You gave this person a, a pretty hard shellacking. You gave him a really hard shellacking here. I just... Uh, wait, what's their pronouns? Do you like, know their pronouns? So it's like I really um, wait, wait. nice to be in the VC rather than some chump in chat, eh? Imagine yeah, being that. That is true. I couldn't imagine being some chump in what chat right fucking now. What a fucking losers. <laughs> yeah. One in well, particular. Just one in particular, really. Everybody else is fine. But I, I, I need to ask you, what are their pronouns? <laughs> I don't know. They're, it's just their voice is unbelievably, so unbelievably androgynous. Like, I've never heard a more gender neutral voice in my life. And that's not even an insult. I was the whole time I was saying she and then backing it off like I should say they because I don't really know. I actually do not know their pronouns. It was impossible to figure it out. Hmm. Yeah, I just I find um, I don't even know how useful this is as a, as a point because it's so few people who it, it would actually catch out, but I guess this guy's one of them. It's like how people can see someone with a picture of Bandera in the background or a black sun and a couple of soldiers. And that's like a huge problem, like urgent problem. But um, the amount of like actual collaboration that was done by the, by the German communists and the Nazis, that's just like no big deal. It's like a really insane contradiction. Like, um, like, like the the fact that um the prussian landtag which was like a, a municipality which encompassed like 22 million voters in the early 30s the uh kpd and the nazis collaborated together to dissolve that parliament because the spd was in charge of it like they tried to dissolve a municipality for 20 million people because of the sp because the spd like the nazis and communists collaborated to do that and these guys just don't give a fuck about that or the fact that like um i think in berlin at one point like 30 percent of the sa fighters uh like the militants had come from the communist party like the strass rights because you know like there was that whole movement to yeah there's like, the strass rights that were, that were they were purged on the night of the long knives yep 
Yeah, yeah. And there was that whole push to like push the socialism into national socialism. So a lot of KPD people, after they were quite frustrated, defected to join the SA. Like the SA was full of ex communists from the KPD. Um, or the fact that they like the KPD also split the I, vote. I also love liberalism, Box. I also love liberalism. I also enjoy it very much. Absolutely. It's a, okay, wait. But I, the thing that really gets me that a lot of history books don't talk about, people talk about the Battle of Warsaw. Right. With like the Warsaw Uprising. Right. They don't talk about how, you know, you know, Stalin kind of like stopped the army and kind of just let Warsaw burn. But um, when it comes to the original battle for Poland, um, not even talking about the Soviet invasion of Poland, which was brutal. It was it was it was it was really bad. Killed a lot of people, was completely just an aggressive action on on, on behalf of the Soviet government in Moscow. But what they don't talk about is the the really heroic defense of many Poles of their country during the uh, original, like the Nazi invasion, 1939, and how there was a plan to continue that struggle to fight against the Nazis and resist them. Now, it was a risky plan. The odds of success probably weren't the highest, but it was all they had. It was their Hail Mary. They had a plan. And even if they didn't succeed, the Germans would have had to take more time to fight the Nazis, uh, to fight the Poles, and they would have lost mm -hmm. more men doing it, more equipment. But due to the Soviet invasion, that kind of undermined that, that undermined that strategy they had to fight the Germans. Now they had to fight a war on two fronts because I guess they didn't really think that the Soviets would be, even if they they signed the non-aggression pact, they'd be so bold to assist the Nazi invasion of Poland. And so then the Nazis occupied half. And they even moved back to accommodate the Soviets uh, to make sure they, they didn't get, they didn't didn't push and didn't mess up their non-aggression pact. The Soviet government then engaged in killings and then mass deportations of Poles all across Siberia, all across the Soviet Union. The Nazis did what the Nazis do. I think we all understand what that is. Until eventually, uh, they ended up taking over France, the Netherlands, the Belgium. That idea of a war on two fronts that would make it so the Germans had to kind of like split up their armies. It was, it was pointless. And that, that made it so that the Germans basically controlled all of Europe for like, like four or five years, like most of Western mm -hmm. Europe. And the damage they did in that time, I mean, is, is irreparable. And it was because of either Stalin's, I don't know if, he, I guess I wouldn't say Stalin's affinity for Nazism, but at the very least, even in the most charitable interpretation, it was one of the most horrific strategic blunders Stalin could have possibly, possibly made trying to put trust uh, in Hitler and just being just, I guess, leaving the Western allies on their own. And when the war, when the, when the rubber hit the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the problem is Dylan is that the Polish were quite right wing at the time. So it was actually perfectly oh, fine. To I murder, oh, like, I didn't, think, oh, I didn't think about that. That's a good point. I didn't, I didn't think about that. They, they, they were, yeah, that's true. They were very, very Christian. That is, oof, that is true. That was true. Yeah. It's, it's also funny that he mentions that, like he was the, uh, um, that how I think on one hand there was this argument that like the Lebensraum was why Hitler went into Eastern Europe, but then the other, then he mentions a book, which is actually why it was more to do with like economic expansion requirements. And yeah, I don't know. Fuck man. By the way, when we Just, talk about, like, when we, when we talk about, is fun, but it's, <laughs> I didn't, I was going to say, um, it's like, I feel like there's a really bad lack of understanding when it comes to Eastern Europe as well, because like, obviously like every Eastern European country at that time did like horrible things when it came to Nazis. But oh, I think there's like people live in this, people live in this world where like either you're okay with Soviet occupation or you're a Nazi. You're but either, actually, like, this, all this, you these got countries, two, wait, 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 there's two mm. options. You're either Adolf Hitler, you want to murder, mm. you want to kill all the Jews and you're Zig Heiling, or you're Joseph Stalin and you need to engage in mass purges, deportations and ethnic cleansing in order to keep the strong hand of, of uh, Stalinist type communism on the state. You know, those are the only two options, no in between. There's no one, mm. no one else. You're either a Stalinist or you're Hitler. Those are your only two options. Everything else is fascism. Which is why, yeah, which is why I would love to know as well that like, uh, like the Latvian partisans who fought against Soviets and Nazis alike, or like even, you know, since all these Baltic states and other East European countries got their independence, a lot of them passed um, laws banning uh, totalitarian symbolism from the public, right? And they, uh, when they did that, they banned hammer and sickles. That was like the main thing, but they also banned swastikas because like all these nationalists in Eastern Europe, like they hate Nazis as well as uh, Soviets. Like that's like the broadest consensus, but that's like kind of where people just, uh, yeah, but I guess that's where the nuance kind of leaves. It was really, it's like, 
Especially Dude, after um, nobody nobody he, talks about. By the way, Stalin kind of under like Stalin and the infighting with the Stalinist faction in Spain and how that undercut their 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 coalition. Oh my God! There's so much shit that Stalin ruined. The joint Soviet British invasion of Iraq. Dude, there's so much stuff that like Stalin was like a, just a power hungry monster. If we're being for real. And and I really don't like that. A lot of people are really trying to rewrite that history. There's a reason that everybody I knew in Ukraine fucking hates Stalin. Everybody I knew in Poland hates Stalin. You pull Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians on Stalin. What do they say? They fucking hate him. You act the Finns, what they think, they hate them. Everybody who had to deal with them directly in any way hates Stalin. The only people who like Stalin are Russians. It's not, that, yeah, well, that's, that's it. The, uh... The, the, it's the weird it's the whole thing about how stalin was just like it was all just prep for barbarossa you know like everything that they did in eastern europe was prep but it's like okay well, why did he send so why did he send like uh, such a like a uh why did he just send like so few people to the to the borders where the nazis would come in from he didn't expect he, they didn't trust each other they expected there might be like people prodding the sphere of influence but he didn't expect a full-blown invasion there's no evidence of that like anywhere no he was surprised um, he actually hid out in his bunker because he thought people were going to come for him he was like he was terrified uh when the invasion actually happened because because people saw like oh wow your collaboration was a huge fucking blunder you dumbass because it's hitler and then like he thought people were coming for him but they didn't because they were too scared of Stalin, or they knew that if they got rid of Stalin, maybe that it would cause chaos, and then it would make it even worse, and then they would have no ability to resist. Um, mm -hmm. he, yeah, he was he was panicked. Um, I mean, people people said he became basically recluse after Hitler invaded the Soviet Union. Also, I see I have a Keffel's raid. I appreciate that. Hey, we got Keffel's oh. raid, so I know we got some more anti-Stalinists coming in because Keffel's has been really Based. based on the Stalin on the anti-Stalin train recently. Choo 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 choo. I really like that was, that was some. She's taking a based stance against Stalin. Okay, very brave, very brave stance against Joseph <laughs> Stalin. Very brave on the internet isn't it weird there's people like you literally say i don't like stalin you're fucking you're like, like there's there's actual people on the internet that will i mean it's the internet i guess i don't know why i'm so surprised now how stupid the internet is like i'll be like how do people believe these things but i mean when there's eight billion people right you know you're just gonna have a few i guess i don't know loose loose nuts and bolts here and there right and a few mental cases it's weird that you enter into a sphere where like the amount of courage it takes to be like a a brave standalone giga chad holodomor disliker you know true true well well you see if you ever acknowledge the holodomor you, the, that is nazi propaganda look i the, the thing i really wanted to ask you about was the bandera mm. stuff because i feel like when we we contextualize like ukrainian nationalism in an international context i feel like a lot of the sting that people are trying to use to make us not support ukraine with with aid which of course i'm a big supporter of that is kind of taken away where i don't like stefan bandera but stefan bandera is not a universally loved character in ukraine he is it's honestly a pretty divisive figure in a lot of ukrainian politics definitely if you're in certain parts of western ukraine that have like large polish communities who for obvious reasons are not big fans of stefan bandera um ukraine is of course it's not like i guess it's not diverse in like an american context but in european context it is a is a decently diverse country when it comes to languages and backgrounds so he is obviously a divisive figure but what a lot of people don't talk about is is let's let's view the united states for a second let's view it like we were like national geographic looking at different nations you and me we're in the we're in a bush right now looking at humans like like they're freaks of nature we're studying their 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 mating habits everything right if we look at the at the united states are you telling me that i can't find like a picture of like donald trump talking about some american historical figure like andrew jackson because he mm -hmm. was a big fan of andrew jackson and talking about Andrew Jackson, tremendous, amazing, fantastic. And if you ask him why he likes Andrew Jackson, he's going to be like, he beat the British, War 1812, won, fantastic, winner, making America big, I like things big. They would give some explanation like that, right? He wouldn't say, oh, I love that he did, like, all those horrible things to the natives. Yeah. Oh, I like I that mean, he preserved the institution of slavery. That's not the reasons he's going to give. Because Donald Trump, like many other people, have a romanticized view of our historical figures. Where we take these people who are com extremely complex, either more bad or more good. It depends on the historical figure. I would say someone like Abraham Lincoln is much more good. Someone like Andrew Jackson is leaning a lot more towards the bad. Even War 1812 was kind of based. 
I would think like most of us can acknowledge like, oh, that's people romanticizing and having a national mythos and that isn't good, but all nations and all nation states have those types of people, right? Where they're problematic heroes that they worship because they're their guy, you know? Andrew Jackson's our guy. We like Andrew Jackson. George Washington, he's our guy, even though he allowed slavery to be protected in our founding documents, right? Like with many other founding fathers. But in the United States, he's the national mythos of these people have been built up where a lot of people are unable to like acknowledge that these are complex people, sometimes more good than others, sometimes more bad. I'm a big fan of Benjamin Franklin. Um, even though I don't know if you heard that story of, of Benjamin Franklin, like bones being discovered in his base, not really relevant, but interesting oh. story. You should Google it. It's, it's really interesting to read, but bringing it back to, uh, to Ukraine, bringing it back to Stefan Bandera. When you talk about that general taking a picture with Stefan Bandera, do you think that guy was taking a picture with Stefan Bandera because he was like, I like all of the bad things about Stefan Bandera. I like the the UPA soldiers who collaborated with the SS. Or do you think he, like many other Ukrainians, have a romanticized view of Stefan Bandera and on the day, uh, like Stefan Bandera's day, I forget what holiday it was exactly. It was a like UPA something, whatever. On, on some event, he takes that romanticized view and says, yay, Stefan, or something along those lines. That exists in every single society in the world, especially in nation's militaries, especially in a nation's militaries. So are we really going to say, if we saw like like some general pose with like a statue of Andrew Jackson at some like, like site of like the War of 1812 battle site, you know, he's down in New Orleans, right? We're going to say, wow. Guess we can't send America aid now that they've been invaded by China. That guy stood next to a statue of Andrew Jackson. Every nation has these types of figures. Yeah, um, it's not like tankies don't understand this either, right? Like if you ask a tanky why they like Lenin, they'll probably say for the for some of his books, not because or for like the beginning of the French of, of the Russian Revolution. They probably won't say it was because of the Cheka or the Red Terror, right? Like they're they're not going to say that's why they like him. So they understand it perfectly well. It's just like just soy pointing at like just like random aesthetics. But like the, I guess the fact is with with Bandera or anyone else, it's that like there is no liberatory or like freedom fire movement that didn't do horrible shit really that is true. um even like every like if you look at the history of every palestinian liberation group that's still going around they all did horrible shit like in the past the kla did horrible shit in the past but when you ask people why they support those groups they're most likely going to denounce the bad shit and when it comes to bandera yeah obviously like even the people even the people who actually do like bandera will usually say it was because he fought occupiers not because he um not because he killed a bunch of Jews. So, but that's that's kind of where people just get really, really ultra selective or like, but it's the same thing. Like you can totally say with like, this is why I don't like, like oh, hero you're worship. a Leninist. You're is like a Marxist Is it really Leninist. that difficult yeah. for people just not engage in hero worship and be like, for example, like I, if someone has asked me my favorite president, I would say Lyndon B. Johnson, right? Because I like the, the large amount of policy he was able to get through. And I think he was an effective legislator. Doesn't mean I think he's a great, he's like a perfect human being. The, the, if you hear some of the dialogue about like, I'm going to show the senator my fucking cock. And he's like, like dragging it out and debating people in his office with his cock. Like the dude was, was like, there's a lot of weird things about LBJ. Not to mention Vietnam was kind of a blunder. Even if I could say the context kind of pushed him into, I don't want to get into it. But LBJ isn't a perfect person, even if he is my favorite president, if I had to pick one, right? But I, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to engage in hero worship of LBJ and pretend he was some like icon. And I think for a lot of people, people and nations want heroes. They want national heroes. They want that national mythos. And every nation kind of has that. And Stefan Bandera is definitely part of Ukraine's national mythos. Uh, the reason why he's a controversial figure is because a lot of Ukrainians are rethinking whether he should be. Yeah, and that's, well, obviously that's something like, that's a discussion that they have to have at some point, because it's probably not good to have a guy who uh, led fucking pogroms to have statues around the place. That's, I agree with that. You shouldn't really have a statue, but the problem is like, you can't really have that discussion in the middle of an invasion, you know? Like that's the kind of privilege it takes to just purity test the fuck out of, an, uh, dude, of a nation that's being occupied you... because some of those people have opinions, positive opinions on like some problematic figures for some reasons, you know? Could you it's, imagine it's so if, yeah. if during like, let's say that China invaded us 10 years ago and then some like, like some like, some person who like you let's say you're some i don't know you're you're like uh you german nato you're, you're in a nato country you're in germany and germany's like okay we got to send the troops to help america and he's like wait a second and he gets in front of the big german government conference and he's like look at this this is the flag of mississippi you see that in the corner 
confederate <laughs> flag yeah. you really want to work and then boom you just like then you're like oh yeah it does the conf- does the mississippi government kind of descend from a lot of confederate politicians and it- absolutely it's impossible to deny it but anybody saying that that symbology or that imagery or like mississippi having kind of like a hero worshipy relationship with the confederacy does not mean that we shouldn't come to America's defense or that the Europeans shouldn't come to our defense if we were to be invaded. Any other context, this would be absolutely silly. But I guess, like, since we're the outsider looking in on Ukraine, it's it's easy to say that when it's not your country. It's easy to use this argument when it's not your country. It's happening, too. Yeah, and I think I think the saddest thing is, because I've been to, um, like, quite a few of the occupation museums in Latvia, and, like, they have a very, very specific theme, and it's an occupation museum, and it's, like, they have um, the two flags, like, the hammer and the sickle and the swastika, like, next to each other, and being, like, first we were invaded by Soviets, then by Nazis, then by Soviets again, um, and... To, because to them, it's like they were both occupiers, they and they hate both of them. That's why they ban swastikas in public spaces, and that's why they ban hammer and sickles. And that's also why um, a lot of their national heroes in a lot in all of these countries uh, f- typically fought against both of them, because to them, it's like that's the it, it, to them those were both massive obstacles and hindrances to not only like to, like, to their freedom and to their. Uh, and to their uh, democracy as well. Like, um, like if you're, what was I going to say? If you are like uh, an individual in that time stuck between the Soviets and the Nazis, you're going to like, and you know, the education system isn't great at that time. Like you're going to have a pretty like equal hatred of both of them because uh, even in the KPD prison in uh, Riga that I went to, when it was first opened by the Cheka in the twenties, but then when the Nazis came into Latvia, they used the same prison for their political prisoners. So there's like a execution chamber that has a bunch of like bullet holes in the walls, some of which were put in there by Nazis and some of which were put in there by Soviets. And a lot of the um, methods that, that, that they used were the same as well. So to a lot of people who lived there, there wasn't much of a difference. Uh, but that's the bit where uh, tankies just can't handle it. They can't handle the fact that Nazis came into uh, a Soviet occupied town saw the prison space that the Soviets had built there and they said, Yeah, that'll do. That's that'll work for us as well, you know? Um, I mean, I, I, I think a lot that they really don't like. A lot of know? people are very comfortable in listening to colonized voices until it comes to the people who were, in a way, uh, in, uh, invaded and conquered by the Soviet Union. When we talk about, like, if you go to Latvians, Lithuanians, Estonians, Poles, Romanians, yeah, ask the Romanian people how they like their Soviet dictator. The person who built what? Was it like a $3 billion mansion? It was the heaviest building in the world as their people were were, were dealing with I- I- extreme amounts of income and equality. He was the, like, the leader of, of, of the communist nation they hated the soviet union and they hate the soviet union today romanians estonians latvians lithuanians poles ukrainians uh moldovans uh fucking you go through any single one of the states that was the soviet union unless you may be serbia they're all going to say they have a negative memory memory of the soviet union and that is on top of the fact that usually people kind of have a rosy eyed pictured glasses view of the youth if you ask americans what was their life like in the 60s and people who like live there they're gonna or what people will say is like oh in the 60s it was like you know it was like the economy was booming it was great that type of rosy eyed nostalgia doesn't really exist for the Soviet Union in these countries, outside of like a few uh, uh, kind of like desperate, like like uh, like random communities here and there, like a few of the really elderly people, but that's mm-hmm. it. So I, I like, why is it so difficult for them to listen to the people who were affected by Stalin's policies, by the Soviet Union's policies? Well, because to them, uh, th- Soviet, like the Soviet Union, probably would still be fine if those like uh, Eastern European like nationalist dumb fucks just went along with it. You know, that's like yeah, it's just that they don't understand that like that's because again like that word, uh, especially in the uh, occupation museum in Riga, the word col- colonialism and colony that was like imperialism. They use that word so much there because that's what happened to them. They were colonized. Yeah, they were colonized by a- an invader that didn't get their permission to come in there. Um, 
and I think one of the the uh, the laws actually of the Soviet occupation in uh, Baltic states, one of them was actually up on the wall. One of the crimes that you could commit and you could end up in a, as a political prisoner, possibly even executed, was uh, if you didn't do your duty to the best of your ability. That was actually a crime, like word for word. That was a crime. So. Yeah, they were they were colonized and they were basically just used as workhorses to fuel some like the industrialization of another country. Um, but, you know, if they that, but they're they're uh, unite they're uniting uh, uh, ideology of resistance was nationalism. They had a national identity and because they're nationalists, then they're basically like right wing and Nazi. And so we don't care about them. It's actually quite. Um, have you seen Timothy Snyder's? series on why the russian war in ukraine is like he, he wants to make the case that it's a genocidal war i haven't listened to his case on that no uh you know how like one of the big stages of genocide is uh dehumanization yeah so his case for russia dehumanizing ukrainians now is not like cockroaches or vermin or subhuman or whatever it's that russians call all the ukrainians nazis that's the dehuman that's the uh, dehumanization is calling people nazis that's... because if you can write off your op uh, opponents Ooh, that's a if good... you can write off the people you're invading as nazis anything you do to them is justified i made an argument similar to that a while ago but it wasn't under the idea that they were this is a stage of genocide just that this is dehumanizing but i have i never made i remember i made that argument um to lauren southern actually and i was like i feel like you'd sympathize with this lauren and i remember getting like yeah. um, <laughs> i got really heated yeah. in the debate but i they never made that nazis you get called a nazi yeah, yeah. yeah i never made the i never made the connection here though i never made the connection here that's a good point yeah um like i don't i don't i don't know what the international community is saying about whether or not um i don't think they've said that bucha was an act of genocide but like yeah like it, yeah it, it definitely fits if it's into the the point being just that calling someone a Nazi can have that effect. It can, it can have the same effect as calling them vermin or calling them cockroaches, right? Because once they're a Nazi, um, it's very like, because especially for Russians, Russians are traumatized by Nazis. Like they lost like 30 million people or whatever the That's fuck. That's true. So you, um, many Ukrainians, they, by the way, many Ukrainians hold horrific uh, memories of the Nazis as well. I feel like a lot of people mm -hmm. just feel like Ukrainians, like in the back of their head, they're always like, hmm, that was kind of okay. No, man, like a lot of them had their villages burned to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, um, but that's the but that's a that's a tactic that's been used all the way uh, since Stalin, right? Like Stalin, when he uh, ethnically cleansed people, and I think Keffel's got into this argument as well, was that the uh, our, Stalin would always say that they were political enemies, they were class enemies, um, even though the class enemies were always like ethnic, like the like uh, like the Tatars, right? But he would say that they were Banderites. The Tatars were deported in 1944 on the grounds that Stalin thought they were Banderites. But you look at the records and it turned out that more Tatars fought in the Red Army than fought with the Nazis. So yeah, but um, it's the same thing, right? Like you can ethnically cleanse a group as long as you just call that ethnic group a bunch of Nazis. Yep. Hey, I do one last thing before you go. Um, when I need an ego boost, I rewatch that Lawrence Southern debate. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was really... You know what? I, I watched my Lawrence Southern debate as well. <laughs> yeah, I thought we could relate. I was I was putting that out there to see if you did the same thing. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, man, for coming on. You have a good one. And great performance, man. You did a great job.